Good morning, welcome to Sewing Street. Um, I'm Debbie, I'm going to be with you for the next three hours. We've got a bit of sewing, we've got a bit of overlocking, we've got a bit of amazing sewing machines and we've got some new fabrics for you too. Um, but well done for coming out here nice and early because we have an early bird special just for those of you that are up bright and early at eight o'clock in the morning. This happens every day and we bring you a reduced price item or in this case items, uh, as long as we have the stock. And these are kind of a back in stock by popular demand bundle of two Two sets of fat quarters, L beautiful colours, rainbow colours, bright uplifting, fresh colours. Um, you're saving six pounds off the regular price and they're only 19 pounds and 98 pence. 100% cotton, so let's take a look at them. And great, oh, let's just pull that off. Um, great blenders. Good to use on their own. If you're making rainbow things still, maybe hanging them in the windows or you're making giftwares and things like that, you've got a gorgeous set of colours here. Let's just move that out of the way for you. Um, purple and teal and turquoise and bright green, gorgeous yellows and the orange and two shades of pink as well. So these are just going to be so useful. I can imagine you patchworking these all together and making a lovely little quilt. Remember you do get two lots, um, so you could make something quite sizeable with these. I'm imagining beautiful bright linings on, on makeup bags or handbags, but a great stash filler, just something that you've always got the right colour there when you go to it. And these kind of colours mix and match with others so well. So I, I just think it's nice to have the right colour for the job. And these are, they're just beautiful. They're, they're just bright and bold and fresh and pretty. And again, all 100% cotton. Nice quality cotton as well. It's got quite an open weave, so if you're a hand sewer, well, that's creased, isn't it? Um, if you're a hand sewer, then... Um, they're, they're easy to sew through as well. Do you know what? I'm going to give that an iron. Because it really doesn't do it justice when you've got something all creased up, does it? So I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because I'm going to need my best press as well. Let's take those creases out. And then you can see the size of a fat quarter as well if you're new to sewing. If you've happened across us this morning, good morning to you. We sew. That's what we do at Sewing Street. We sew stuff. All kinds of stuff. Um, but I know a lot of people, when you first start, is that me banging down there? What a noise. Um, sewing, and you see all these different terminologies and layer cakes and jelly rolls and a fat quarter. I remember the first time I, I heard somebody say fat quarter and I thought, I just thought, you're insulting somebody there. But this is it. That's better. So that's what a fat quarter looks like. So around about, depends on the width of the bolt, but they'll be 18 inches long by around 22 inches in width. So you've got quite a lot of fabric there. But on they're just pretty colours. They're so useful. On their own, blending with other colours, with other fabrics, however you're going to use them. Just really useful. And remember, you're saving six pounds purely because you got up early this morning at eight o'clock. Maybe this isn't early for you. Maybe you've been up since the crack of dawn. It's, uh, it's just starting to get light when I, when I leave home in the mornings now. Start when I get up still, but um, I like the light mornings. I like to get up. I get so much more work done in the morning before everybody else gets up than, than the rest of the day. It's kind of my, my on my own time. So, oh, now <laughs> we're down to single figures on these already. Well done. Um, it, it's so nice to bag yourself a bargain particularly when it's fabric. We can't sew without it. Um, you know, this, this is a huge part of our lives as a, the, the sewing industry. Um, and it's just so nice to be able to bag something that is so very affordable and so useful as well. And these have been brought back to you by popular demand. So they, they do sell out time and time again. Um, and it's gonna happen again today. So if you'd like to order, you can go to our website on um, sewingstreet.com. Um, when you go there, you'll see Jewelry Quarter, which is our sister channel because we're piggybacking on their website at the moment while ours is being built. Because we're only babies, we're only two months old here at Sing Street. So we're still building things and working on it. But if you look underneath the video, so you'll see me there, hello. Um, <laughs> and then as you look underneath there, you'll see all of the products that we have for the next three hours. And then if you scroll down even further, you can go to the, all of the different chapters and take a look what else we have for you. So you can order that way, um, or you can order on the phone lines, which is 0800 001 4433. And uh, that's a UK free 
library um, call center as well so you can order two ways and you can multi-order if you like as well just because it's a reduced price we don't limit the amount that you can order you can wipe us out the rest of them as to left if you wanted to um, and that's entirely up to you so two bundles all together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 fat quarters. I could have read that here, couldn't I? For your 19 pounds and 98 pence. So that's only, what about one pound 25 each? That's good value for money, isn't it? For a fat quarter? Normally they expect to pay 2.99, 3.99, depending on the, on the quality. So I think you've got a real bargain there. So that's the early bird. So just like yesterday, I should be back in a minute to say that's gone. Sometimes they last 10 minutes, sometimes they last all day, and sometimes they last for weeks. But that's not going to last very much longer at all. Right. Um, I just want to give you a tease of something that's coming up later. Look at all those. This is Madeira thread. It's overlocker thread. In the basic colours that you're going to need, and there are four of each of those. So you've got the blacks, a couple of greys, you've got a white, and you've got a couple of shades of neutral as well. We do have the air thread overlocker coming up later on as well. But if you want to stock up on your threads of a decent size as well, sometimes overlocker threads can be on combs that are so big. And I know you use a lot of threads with an overlocker, um, but some, I mean, those, those threads can sometimes last for years. Um, so these are a nice little compact size as well. Um, you've actually got 1,320 yards on each one of those. So there is quite a lot on there. Um, have a look on the website for those. We shall go into more details later on right natural cedar cotton last time we brought this to you went like that because it's just really useful it's a really affordable fabric it's only two pound fifty for half a meter if you wanted to order more then it will come by the meter so if you're making toiles if you're a dressmaker this is a fantastic fabric to make from a toile you'll make up um as kind of um a, a sample if you like of what you're going to make so you can make sure it fits so if there's any alterations to be done here or here or altering the bust or the shoulders or whatever you do it on I'm not going to say scrap fabric you do it on a cheaper fabric than your dressmaking fabric so you can make sure all of your alterations are correct before you start cutting into more expensive fabric so this kind of fabric calico is normally ideal but this seems to be more affordable um, but I also like this that you see the brown specks on it that is the seed, that's why it's called natural seeded. So those are actually cracked seed pods, um, which gives it a really lovely organic kind of feel. So I'd be thinking of using this with um, like a vintage type of lace, I think would look really lovely and make a table runner and table mats with it. Um, it would make a fantastic lining for a bag. It'd be nice for your sash co as well. Um, got some of that coming up in the next hour too. I did start to make a cushion cover using the seeded cotton and you can see how you mix it with different types of fabric as long as you keep them all in that you know organic kind of natural colors mix those different textures together these are linens that we have on the on the website um, and you can create some really lovely homewares as well so if you're a beginner sewer if you want to practice if you've never made a bag before or a pouch and you think oh i've got some really beautiful fabric but i'm a bit worried about cutting into it there's no reason why you can't make a bag toile and then i think you find you'll you'll just use it anyway so again two pounds fifty will bring you that that could be easily a cushion cover of that kind of size you could easily make a 17 inch square cushion pad out of that if you put a zip in it envelope bags take a little bit more um and wouldn't that be nice in the garden but then maybe put some oh some trim around it you can get trim that looks like it's made from string um mix it with hessian and those type of things i think you've got a, a really lovely look with this so it's got an it's got a nice drape I wouldn't dress make with it, but you can make an apron. So if you are a beginner sewer, and there's lots of you out there at the moment, or if you're one of the many people who are coming back to sewing, so you used to sew when you were younger, and now you're stuck at home all day, you think, gee, I've still got a sewing machine, I may as well dig it out and, and rekindle my passion. Um, this is a great fabric to use, because if things do go horribly wrong, I mean, there's a lot of going wrong here with half a metre, but it's only £2.50's worth of going wrong. So it's a good practice fabric. But I, I like this 
I like this kind of look. It's a, a rustic kind of feel. And particularly if you're making things for the garden. So you could make some um, storage boxes, maybe something to put your garden bits and bobs in, um, like a craft bag, but with bigger pockets so you can put trowels and seeds and things like that in there. Or maybe covering seats. What, what's your garden furniture looking like? <gasps> Those uh, chair covers for the garden are so expensive. So make your own. Take off what you've got already, uh, what you've already got on there, and make a pattern from it, and then just cover it in lovely natural fabrics. So, sold out just like that last time, and at two pound fifty, not surprised. And remember, if you do order more than one, if you wanted a meter of this, order two units, and it will come in one meter length, and so on, and so forth. So you could order quite a size of uh, a fabric with that one. Okay, uh, the best press that I used earlier on. Oh, early bird sold out, by the way. Told you I'd be about to tell you that. Best press. Do you use starch? Do you use starch for removing creases in your ironing? Or if you wanted to add a little bit of um, stability? Or if you're using a, um, a jersey fabric that tends to roll? And we say starch, starch, starch before you sew to really flatten that out. Sometimes with starch, it leaves starchy residue doesn't it? you get like a white powder um, best press has the same effect as starch but you don't get the white powder you don't get the residue uh, and it's not an aerosol like airy <laughs> it's not an airy soul uh, like <laughs> like a lot of starches are uh, and it's fragranced as well so you'll find it doesn't give the, the the stiffness that a spray starch would do but it has that same kind of effect so it gives body to your fabric your creases just melt away and it smells delightful. So if you're pressing um, bed linen, if it's um, you know, new pillowcases, and I like to put creases in pillowcases. I think it just shows that they've been ironed, I don't know. Um, there was a whole debate on this morning, um, the other day, um, about do, do you iron your bed sheet? I can't sleep in a sheet that hasn't been ironed. It has to be absolutely flat and pristine. And I sleep better, I'm, I'm convinced I sleep better. And a lovely pillowcase that's just, so I fold it in half twice lengthways, so I've got nice creases down it. And just, but then when you've got a lovely fragrance as well, that is not overpowering, but you just lie there and you get this gentle waft of lavender. And it goes a long way as well. So this is £11.99. I, I was really surprised, actually, the first time I used it. I was asked to give it a trial, test it out, see what you think. And I thought, it's, uh, surely it's just flavoured water. It's not going to, I mean, the water's going to get the creases out, isn't it? Um, but no, it does, it does actually add that body to your fabric as well. And it lasts a long time. So starch is a thing of the past in my household. £11.99 price there. Stock up if you wanted to go for more than one. And oh, can I mention the postage as well? It says 3 95 postage all day. So if you order this now, or you've ordered the early bird, or you've ordered your seeded cotton fabric or anything else, we'll charge you 3 95 postage. But then if you come back later on in the day, we're not going to charge any extra. It, it almost means that you make one purchase with postage and everything else throughout the day till midnight tonight is PMP free. And we do that, we do that every day, we just do that. So if you've already checked out on your early bird and you think, oh, I don't want some of that best price, but that's another 3 95 Then I might want something later, that's another 3 95 We don't do that. One payment all day long. Right, so that's best press. Um, oh, we've had a message from Vanda. Hi, Vanda. Um, could you make the rag doll with natural seeded cotton? I wouldn't, to be honest. I think the weave is a little bit loose. Um, and on things like toys, it's not the softest of fabric. It is... It, it's not as soft as calico is, for instance. But on things that you stuff, I just think it doesn't, it's, it's, no, it's not right. You need a cotton for it. Cotton would be a lot better with a nice tight weave on it, personally. This can tend to distort a little bit if you're going to stretch it like that. And when you're pushing um, toy filler inside something, it'll, it could give a little bit. So, but you could make a nice little frock, make an apron out of it. You could make a practice rag doll. If you do have any questions, Come along on Facebook. Um, well, our Facebook page is Sewing Street TV. And if you go to visitor posts, that's where you'll find me. So you'll see the last one was Jennifer who um, we messaged in yesterday. Oh, I've just switched you off again. Where have you gone? Oh, there you are. <laughs> you can't say anything that's going on. Um, so my um, phone is at the side of me so that I can pick up your messages straight away. 
Mike, we've got frozen fabric. <gasps> Do you know, the weather that we've been having is so warm in the studio today, I don't think it's going to be very good this week. But I wish that was real <laughs> frost so I could just go, oh. So we've got the whole set of fabrics with lots of characters. And these are foiled, but it's very subtle, so you can just see with the, the snowflakes there. Look at the depth there. It's, it, it really does look three-dimensional, doesn't it? This is um, half a metre, it's only £3.99. And again, if you wanted more meterage, then just order more units and it'll all come together. So if you wanted to make dress-up outfits, if you're decorating a child's room, it could be pillowcases, you could be making a little cock quilt, um, if you need bed linen, but decorations in your room, if you're making, I don't know, mobiles and ornaments and what, oh, drawstring bags and laundry bags to hang on the back of the door, maybe. Um, but if you did want to dress make with this, it's a really, nice quality as well. Make a little waistcoat from that. Or oh, big waistcoat. I mean, I'm talking kids, but you can be any age, can't you? Um, so only £3.99. Again, for half a metre. And that's your half a metre. 112 centimetres wide and then half a metre in length. Then... Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to get seven metres of this one left, by the way, with the um, seeded cotton. That's going quickly. Uh, let's move on to Elsa and Olaf. I always get his name wrong. I always want to call him Odif, but that's a fabric spray, or Olfa. Um, <laughs> this is um, 6 99 So this is um, frozen branded. And again, 100% cotton, half a metre. Um, in length and 112 centimetres wide. And lots of detail in here as well. So I love the little snowflakes. That's something that you could fussy cut, isn't it? Maybe put a little bit of applique onto something. <laughs> so that's uh, a Frozen Adventure Blue for 6 99 for half a metre. Then we have Ice Skating. So this is Frozen Adventure on light blue. Again, it's £6.99. I'd, I'd be cutting all of these out. And it kind of makes your fabric stretch a little bit further, doesn't it? And add these to, um, to other items. So there you've got, I want to say Anya, and it's not, is it? Anna and Elsa and Olaf. And again, £6.99, all 100% cotton and really lovely quality as well. Oh, I had a message from Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Um, oh, she's, oh, she's very excited today because her Elna 7, oh, is that, is that Mandy? Uh, Mandy Elna 720 Pro is being delivered today. We've got it coming up at uh, 10 o'clock this morning. If you haven't seen that machine before, it's, oh, no, it's the 720 she's got. Oh, you'll love it. Now, we've got the 780 coming up at 10 o'clock this afternoon. Sorry, I'm getting me seven, I've got me 20s and me 80s mixed up. You will love that 720. That's the, um, the next generation from the machine that I've got. So it's, it's everything that I loved about the machine, but then extra bits. You will love it. Let me know how you get on. Let me know what you're going to make with it as well. OK, back to Frozen. And back to Anna. I like this one because it... Aunt Elna? Elsa. <laughs> so I'm renaming all... <laughs> All of your Disney characters to sewing related names. Elna's a good name, isn't it? Elna and Elsa. Um, <laughs> I'm not giving up on that. But I think it gives a Scandinavian look. It looks like knitwear, doesn't it? <laughs> um, £6.99. <laughs> Back to Olfa. It's, it's only the letters mixed up a different way, isn't it? Um, and this one will make nice borders, I think. Because you can, um, you can cut across the... It doesn't overlap, so you can actually cut those in strips, which I think is quite a nice idea. So that could be um, around a hemline or um, a border on a, I don't know, a, a pillowcase, something that you've already got. You don't have to make things from scratch. You could just embellish things that you already have. And then finally, we have the Sisters and the Snowman. Can't, can't get away with that one. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way of uh, describing them, I think. Um, otherwise, I just need to ask a three-year-old who they are, don't I? Um, again, £6.99. This is non-directional, so it doesn't matter which way around you use it. Um, but if you still wanted to fussy cut those out, then 
you've got uh, you've got nice sizable pieces there. Morning dawn. Oh, can you use the natural cedar cotton for lining inside a bag? It's perfect for lining inside a bag. Yes, you can. There you go. Let's have another quick look because I think this is going to go. Uh, it, it is about to go. Um, it's only two pound fifty for half a metre. Bag lining, absolutely perfect. It's nice and it, you know it's not stiff. It's easy to sew. It is quite a loose weave, um, but it, I mean, even if you mix that with things like your PU, that would make a lovely bag. You could even make a bag flap out of out of that if you like that natural kind of look so yeah that will mix and match with fabrics really well and it's perfect for aligning but be quick if you're ordering it's about to go check out your baskets if you're on the website or pick the phones up now if you want to order on the phone lines it's gonna go uh, we have new fabrics oh we've got some lovely new ones and loads of them i'm going to make so i saw these and i thought i love this one and I think it would go really well with the navy um, PU. So I'm, I'm going to make something with those two in a bit. So perks of the job, <laughs> that being in a candy store. Um, isn't that pretty though? Swallows on the striped fabric. And they're very delicate and the stripes are pinstripe, it's very close together. It's only £4.99 for half a metre and this I think would be the kind of fabric that would make a really lovely summery shirt, a, a short sleeve blouse. You imagine that I would have put red buttons down it, that would look lovely. Um, a pinafore dress, um, a gathered skirt maybe or a pencil skirt would be really nice. A dressmaking quality of fabric um, but if you wanted to use this for homewares, if you wanted to use it for quilting that's... Um, Perfectly okay. But let me show you. 145 centimetres, which is normally the width that you find for dressmaking fabric. Um, so it's a poplin kind of weight. So it has got a lovely drape and a density if you wanted to make a dress out of that. That would be a very short one. But remember, if you order more than one, they all come joined up. Um, so you could easily make um, garments from this. And it's only £4.99. That's really pretty. So, does that make your eyes go a little bit funny? Does it do that, doesn't it? <laughs> right. So, that's birds on stripe. Put that there. Look at this one. This is the, um, the pine leaves. Lots of different colour greens. And it's all shaded as well. So, there's actually a lot of colours in here. So I'd go for a, a yellowy kind of green um, to complement it, I think. So even if I was making a shirt out of this, I might put a different colour placket and cuffs and collar, maybe the top of the pocket in a different colour. But that would make a nice dress, wouldn't it? So when, when it's going to be raining for the next few days, that's when you can... I might not be able to get it to you very soon. Um, I mean, the postage is dreadful at the moment. I, I mean, it's understandably, but things have just taken a little bit longer. Um, Extra wide again, so we've got 145 centimetres wide. But when the weather's not too good, because I don't feel like doing anything when the weather's nice, I just want to sit in the garden. I got the gardening gloves out yesterday. I got them out, didn't do anything with them. Um, but these are the times when we can get our summer wardrobe sorted out. But this again would make nice cushion covers, wouldn't it? So in your, in your conservatory, it's very summery, it's very fresh, and it's very modern. And it's very only £4.99 as well. Right, that one, that one. That, oh, this is lovely. So they all are. There's, there's some really, really nice new fabrics for you here. Um, jungle green. This looks like, I don't know, a fantasy to me. Um, look at all the colours of those birds of paradise. And again, so much detail, so much depth. We've got monkeys in there. We've got a cheetah. Can you see him? Hiding away. There's your monkey, and then we've got these beautiful birds. But look at all of the colours in there. But you can, you can mix that with any other fabrics. There's the blues, turquoise, yellows, every colour of the rainbow. That is so pretty. That would make a nice dress, wouldn't it? Like one of those um, 
retro 1950s style dresses with maybe a bardo top and a big skirt. Like that idea. So, from the jungle to the garden with our multicoloured butterflies. This is fun. But still of dressmaking quality. Um, so it, I, I like I like that idea. Dressmaking fabric normally tends to be a bit of a tighter weave than quilting fabric, um, which gives it a drape, but it also gives it a density, so it's not going to be see-through when you wear it. Um, but you can, of course, use it for quilting as well. So it's a very versatile fabric, no matter what kind of genre of sewing you like to do. But that would make nice cushion covers, wouldn't it? you make curtains out of it. Um, if you say you're ordering by the half metre, so at the moment for your £4.99, that's what you're going to get. So you've got a nice width as well. But if you've got 145... I, I do curtains in inches, so I'm not too good at that. Um, that'll be 54 inches wide. 50, 54 inches, when you're thinking about standard sizes of windows, um, 54 inches is an average size of a window, isn't it? Like, like if, you, if you buy one off the shelf, they tend to be standard sizes. So I'd go for twice the amount of fabric as the width of the window. So if your window's 54 wide, maybe you've got a 54 drop, you've got a square window, I'd go for two pieces of those and that would be plenty enough for one side of your curtain because then when you gather it up, it's going to shrink by half. And then as long as you like. If it's sitting inside the recess, then you need to order a couple of metres of that. But I, I kind of like small windows with big curtains that go all the way down to the floor. Maybe puddle on the floor as well. So that's it. decorating your spare bedroom now. There's a lot of people doing um, home makeovers at the moment. Um, there's been queues and queues and queues of people outside DIY stores apparently saying on the news this morning so if you are having a bit of a makeover I think we've got something for everybody's taste here rainbow colors rainbow raindrops multicolored dots on white we're calling this one and again they're not dots are they dots are round definition of a dot small round thing these are raindrops <laughs> um, 4 99 again, and it's the 145 wide. And again, it's a popular weight, so it's great for dressmaking. That'd make an, I'm going to say every one of these, and that'd make a nice dress. There. This would make a nice dress. I love a flowery frock. And this kind of uh, fabric, I think it's elegant, it's right up my street, I, I love this print. Um, I think it's elegant and it's delicate, um, it's soft and it's subtle, so it's not um, a bright baby pink, it's a salmon-y kind of pink, it's just really pretty. Uh, pink tulips on cream fabric, it doesn't describe this at all, it's, uh, it's on a, a, a pale pink fabric, it's, that is so lovely, definitely dressed for me. And again, £4.99. I haven't seen the sewing bee. Have you, has anybody seen the sewing bee? I didn't watch it. It was, it was the first one last week, wasn't it? Apparently they were making tea dresses. I like, I like a tea dress. That would make a lovely tea dress, wouldn't it? Yeah, that is so pretty. That's one of the things about working here. You just want to take everything home. Oh, I can make a dress out of that and I can make curtains out of that. And never have time to make anything. This is tulips on grey. Ooh. You could go for the two together and have a contrast trim. That would look nice. And again, it's only £4.99. <clears throat> pair of shorts, maybe. Not, not short shorts. You know, like the 1940s style of shorts that they used to wear, quite a high waist and nice deep pockets on them. That would be rather nice. My head's doing this. I could do that. I could do that. Really pretty. And it feels nice. Nice to wear. And that goes nicely with that one. This is a sorted flower on pinstripe grey. 
I like stripes and flowers. They kind of became popular a couple of years ago, didn't they? See a lot of checks with flowers on and gingham with flowers on and stripes with flowers on. Um, and it just, it just really works. It adds interest to the background. Really bright colours on there as well. We have, um, oh, I don't know, poppies, rubbish at flowers. But they're quite delicate as well. It's not too bright and overpowering, but you have got a lot of colour going on in there. So, again, £4.99 each price there. Ooh. Err. Um, this is the um, sort of flowers on the, on the cream. It's pink. See, that would go really well with that. Um, £4.99 again, 145 wide. That, isn't that pretty? I love that colour pink. It's a very classy, kind of elegant look. It's very at market. I'm really pretty fabulous. That didn't make a nice bag. Um, it's lightweight fabric, though. It's a lightweight fabric, but it's got a very dense weave, so that's what gives it this nice sheen. Um, so if you're making a bag, unless you want a very soft bag, I would make sure that you get some um, stabiliser interfacing on there. Red flowers on cream says cushion covers to me. Oh, that would make nice curtains, wouldn't it? Again, you might need an interlining or um, some kind of stabiliser on the back of them, or certainly a lining, um, because there's a curtain, it's not, it's not really upholstery fabric, so the sun would shine through. 145 white, four bands, 99 your price. Curtains and pillows in your bedroom. See, that now's a good time to decorate the spare room, because you're not gonna have visitors come and stay in it for a while. This is lovely. Another really elegant print. This is quite clever as well because there's a print of a weave in the background on this one. So it looks like linen. But they're like watercolours, aren't they? Love these flowers. Um, only £4.99 again. 100% cotton. And extra wide at 145 wide. Now, if you, um, if you don't want to sit and watch me go all the way through these, do take a look on the website. They're all listed there, which is sewingstreet.com. The blue's nice. They're all nice. So this is aqua. So you've got the same print in different colours. Doesn't it look different? But you can really see the, uh, the print in the background on this one. It's, it's very textural. As in, the print's very textural. It's a very clever design. It gives a, a depth and dimension to the print. So that's assorted flowers and leaves on aqua for £4.99 a half a metre. And then we're going a little bit more modern. But on a pale aqua background this time. We have flowers and butterflies in pinks and corals and greens. There's dragonflies, daisies and honeysuckles. But it's pretty for summer dresses, this one, wouldn't it? Mm. Oh, little hats and matching, matching rompers, like, like dungarees with elasticated short buttons. Oh, little dresses with frilly pants to match. So the same print on grey, again, has a very different feel to it. Um, so on the aqua, on the, on the previous one, I'd think little girls' dresses. This one looks a bit more grown up, even though it's the same print. But still really pretty. And it's only £4.99 again. Oh, if, you, if you're um, adding trims, if you're adding pockets on bags or, or pockets on dresses, that would go a long way. Maybe you've got a plain grey fabric. It's a little bit dull on its own, so just add a little bit of, little bit of fun. And then finally, same print. But this time we've got that pale pink background. So butterflies and flowers on rose. £4.99 your price. Now, anything you'd like to order, remember we have um, our website is sewingstreet.com. So you can take a look there or you can order on the phone lines, which is a UK based um, phone line, which is 0800 0433. 
So those are the two ways that you can place your order. And remember, you can come and send us a message on Facebook if you like. It would be lovely to hear from you this morning. Um, like Cheryl has. Oh, oh, that is lovely. Have a look on Facebook at Cheryl's bag. Um, she says she made it using my satchels book with the black PU, which we've got. Have we got black? We haven't got black. We have. Um, black PU we've got coming up later. And a fabric flap. That looks really nice. Oh, um, PU is already busy. Um, so I'll take you through what we have for you in a bit. But I think we ought to do a bit of sewing. All of these fabrics are on the website, all brand new for you today. Sewingstreet.com. Right, I've pulled back this one, which is the birds on stripe. And I just thought that with the navy PU, they just go so nicely together. Goes well with the red. But I thought, well, what, what would I make from those? So I'm going to make a laptop, a laptop, a tablet case. So I'm kind of winging it a bit because I haven't got a tablet. But you get the idea. Have we got a, have we got a tablet? That would be useful. But you can measure this to fit your own. Or it doesn't have to be for, thank you, it doesn't have to be for a tablet. It's just a really, really simple bag. Now with this PU, when you get it home, it will be rather creased. You can iron this from the back. It is the most amazing fabric. Let me show you. Um, don't iron it from the top, it will melt. But the backing fabric is knitted, so it has a little bit of give. It's got a bit of stretch. And it's so soft and drapey. You could use this for dressmaking as well. It's a, I think it's 160 wide, this one. But just give it a, a blast from the back. And you will see... Oh, I'm out of water. Um, the crease is just melting away, so don't be frightened of it. It'll go ever so soft and floppy when you, when you first iron it. Yeah, we're out of water on that. So just iron it and don't be worried about it. It will help if you have um, a walking foot or a non-stick foot on your sewing machine. If you're sewing it from the back side, then... Set it again. Um, then the feed dogs underneath your machine will pull the fabric through so you don't have to worry about um, special feet or anything if you're sewing from this side um, But if you want to do any top stitching on it, then you will need a foot on most machines You're going to need a non-stick or a walking foot because it will stick a little bit So there's my laptop. So I'm going to have the main part of the bag in um, In the PU and then I'll have a lining and a flap in that fabric so let me take off the selvage. The selvage on your PU looks a bit scraggy. That's, that's how it looks. That is a selvage. Don't get this home and think, oh, that's not very nice. It's not, is it? But selvages tend not to be, but you cut them off. So you can see the little holes down, whoop, come here, down the side there, and you can actually see the plastic coating or the PU coating on the fabric. So just chop that off. Don't worry about it. Rather a long piece there. And you see how easy that is to cut through as well. So then I'm going to take my tablet. I'm just going to make sure that's straight at a right angle, which it isn't. So let's cut across here and make that straight. Have a look on the website if you need any rulers or anything like that. We've got loads of them there you off there. I'll need it to be about an inch bigger than my tablet all the way around. So let's cut that about there. Like so. And I'll just need two pieces. Now if you wanted to use a fusible fleece or foam with your, um, I'll show you, you can do. But again, normally with a fusible fleece like your H640, which we will be getting in stock soon, promise, um, you'd iron from the front side of the fabric. But we're going to iron from, I'm not going to say back side again, from the wrong side of the fabric. 
So let's just make this bigger, about an inch bigger all the way around. So I'm not giving you measurements as I go because you'll measure this to suit your own. Oh, there we go. And I'll need two pieces the same. It's ever so easy. Um, and it makes just a, a nice little pouch. Something's gone awry there, look. Which you could make bigger if you wanted to store documents and things like that in. That's not quite straight, so I'm just going to trim it down a bit. And there, so I've got the front and the back both the same size. With your fleece, this is a fusible, so actually I haven't got any steam on, on my iron, have I? Um, if I will be okay for now, let's see if it works. So from the back, just put your iron down and up very quickly. So just test it a little bit. This is polyester, so we don't want it to melt and we don't want it to stick to your iron. So that is holding down a little bit longer, but that's the way to do it. Otherwise, if you have your sprays, this is a huge one. When we get them back in stock, there will be the smaller ones on the website. You can actually spray your PU and then pop it onto your fleece. So you can, it doesn't ha you don't have to use the fusible aspect of your fleece, you can just stick these on there. Try not to get sprays on the outside of the PU because they can stain. So just be careful with those. Just get them there. And there like that. But you can wash these. So spot cleaning, absolutely fine. But if you're making um, garments out, if you want to make yourself a leather look skirt or something like that, um, or even a jacket, um, you can 30 degree wash these. And they don't shrink. And they don't shrivel up and they don't melt. But don't use a hot wash, use a cool wash. There we go. Let's just trim this one down. And then I'll need two pieces of lining to the same size. So again, I'll use those as templates. And just cutting around those. So the lining piece is the same size. And then I'm going to make a flap. So I'll gauge that when I've cut these out. So, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I actually want the flap to be slightly shorter because otherwise I'm going to have a very tight fit inside the seams. So that's my flap's going to go over there like that. I think I'm going to keep it square. I think that looks really smart. So I'll need two pieces again. So let's... I've got two there. Yes, I have. Let's chop a piece about that big. And again, if you're, I mean, I'm, I'm not giving you measurements, you do this so that it looks proportional for you. And I think that's quite nice. Take into account that this is going to sit inside the seam, so it'll wrap over from the back. So if that folds over by about halfway, I think that looks quite nice. And again, I want that to sit slightly inside, so I'm going to cut it about a quarter of an inch shorter on each side. Okay, so that's that. I will have some fleece on the wrong side of one piece, or just the outer section of the line of the flap. Don't put it on the lining; doesn't need it. But the flap, I think, will do. So this time, because it's cotton, 
I'm going to iron it from the the fabric side and just holding it in place at the moment because if I go over onto the fleece with my iron I'm going to get glue on the iron and then we'll cut this out you don't have to use the H640 if you wanted a, a finer bag but you want to stabilize the fabric you can get some heavyweight interfacing some of your interfacings can feel like leather they're very heavy I don't like those myself I find it them quite difficult to work with um, but a firm dressmaking interfacing would, would be fine on the back of this. Or of course you could use your foams. So now I can go right up to the edge and just make sure that's stuck all the way around. There. So it's nice to have the cushioning or the padding when you're making something for a tablet because they're glass after all. So nice to have them... Um, nicely padded. I'm going to use a magnetic snap. I don't, if I can find it, I don't know. I don't have an issue, I've used them before with magnetic snaps with my tablet. If you do, if you're a little bit worried about magnets around your tablet, then um, put a piece of Velcro on instead. So I don't know what I've done with that. I had one, especially, it took me ages to find it and I've lost it. You can probably see it at home right in front of me somewhere, can't you? How many times do I do this? If I was fitting a magnetic snap, I would do it now and fit the, um, the smaller side to the, uh, the lining of the flap and then the thicker side would go onto the outside of your bag. But I can't find it, so I'm not going to do it. It'll turn, it did before, didn't I? What did I lose last time? Um, there was a, a cover of the, um, a quick and pick that we were selling. Couldn't find it anywhere. So I put it back in the box, we got to the end of the show, and it was here, right in front of me. Right, let's make up the flap first of all. So, right sides together. There is a way of actually sewing flaps on. Uh, adding magnetic snaps after the event. I'm using a walking foot on this machine. This is the little 550. It doesn't come with a walking foot. Um, so if you've got this machine and you wanted one, it's, a, it's an extra. Stop with the needle down and turn around. And I like to use around about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's not set in stone. Needle down, turn around. There we are, so that's the flap. I'm going to chop off the corners. Not too close to the stitches. And we'll turn it the right side out. I might hand sew a piece of Velcro to fasten it. It needs fastening, doesn't it? Um, and then put a nice big red button on the front of it. So I'd put, oh, let me just top stitch that. That'll hold all of the, uh, hold the seams together, make it look nice and neat as well. Um, at home, because this is all blue and white, it does have a nautical kind of feel. I'd use um, maybe a red top stitch thread to really make it stand out. I think top stitching just gives it a shop bought look. A nice professional finish to your work. Down there. And again, for this bit, you don't need a walking foot. The only time you need the walking foot is when we, uh, if we top stitch around the, the PU. Right. This is going to go, if, if, I had a, if I had a magnetic snap on it, that would be facing up now. And I'm going to sew that to the top of the back of my bag. So make it central. Now you can pin through these, but you're probably better off using some, uh, some clips. 
if you put pins into the PU and it leaves holes, um, give it a blast of steam from the back afterwards and you'll find that the holes kind of heal up. So back to the machine. And I'm sewing close to the edge because this is just a tacking stitch. It's just holding the flap in place. So I can lengthen the stitch actually on that as well. Right, now the lining, should we do it that way? There's different ways you can do these. I'm going to put the lining right sides together now over the top of the bag. So the bit that I've just sewn on there, that's going to go over there and we'll sew across the top. So I'll sew from this side so I can see where my previous stitch line was and make sure that I'm, I'm not exposing that. So I'm sewing on the inside of it about here. And just line up the edges. I don't don't feel the need to clip those. I can just hold them together. So we've got that. And then with the other side, you can put a zip pocket on the inside as well. You can really kind of go to town, patch pockets on the outside. You could put a buckle on here. You could add straps if you wanted to um, kind of make handles with it. But this is just ever so simple. I think these are the kind of things that if you, you don't have much time and you just want to do a bit of sewing, um, or if you want to give somebody a simple gift, or if you're learning to sew, these are just really simple projects. Right, now we're going to sew this one and this one right sides together. And I'll leave a gap at the bottom so I can turn it the right side out. So this is the bottom of the lining. And I just want to match up the seams at the side here because that's, that's important, that's the bit that you see from the front. So let's line those up. And I'm going to start sewing from there just to make sure that they are matching. Where's my pedal gone? Needle down. And just sew all the way around. So one of the reasons I made the flap a bit short is because if it was the same width as my fabric, I'd be sewing over it now. So stop at the bottom with the needle down. Turn around. go. Needle down. And I'll just make sure that these two are, are lined up as well. There is a bit of give in this PU, so if you do need to ease anything, you can stretch it a little bit. But it's not such a, you know, it's not like a, a jersey fabric where it's so stretchy that um, you'd have a bouncing bag. So the machine might sound a little bit noisy because you've got the I've got the walking foot on there. They tend to be a bit a bit rattly these feet. So across the bottom, I'm going to reverse there and leave a gap, and then carry on. And then back from whence we came. Oh, it's a bit wobbly there. And back up to that starting seam. Did I miss a bit there? No. Snip off my corners. Oh, we're having some questions. I like, I like questions. Um, Hilary. Hello, Hilary. Oh, she wants, she's looking at the, um, the PU fabrics and wanting to know if it'll go with the cotton canvas. Ideal. That would look so good. Um, yeah, per the perfect match. And neither of them are so heavy, you know, not like you're using a, a leather with, a, a, with the canvas, which would be quite tricky to work with. Yes, that would be really nice. I've had a message from Jo as well. Hello, Jo. And she said... What sewing needles do you use? Universal one. Just a universal sewing needle. I've missed a bit there, look. So I'm going to go back round again. Um, you don't need anything special for these. Um, if you are sewing through leather, 
then you would need a leather needle because um, that's a chisel shape. So that's designed for, for fabrics that, you know, you, you imagine if, you, if you're sewing into leather, I never use leather, but if you were sewing into leather, the thread's really going to drag. Um, so that's got a chisel shape to allow the thread to go through and then the opening closes afterwards because leather heals itself. Um, just sewing through fabric like this, you don't need a special needle. If I'm sewing this onto a canvas, maybe with interfacing, then um, a denim needle would be ideal because that's a stronger needle, but you don't, don't go out and buy anything specially. Was that the side I missed? I think so. Um, and then Wendy's messaged in, hi, loving the show, thank you. Oh, no, the pattern for the dress behind me is a, I think it's a new look pattern, I can't remember which one it was. But I shall find out and I shall let you know. I'll put it on my Facebook page. I'm surprised you can tell what it's like from that. We haven't really looked very closely at it. It's a nice, nice pattern. Right, I think I'm sewn over the right bit, not to worry if I'm not. Okay, so pull it all through. Then I have a hole in the bottom of the lining, so I'll need to sew over that. That's fine. So you can't press this, but you could try using your roll and press, which is coming up in the next hour. So I pull the sides of the hole apart and the raw edges tend to fold into the seam allowance like so and then just sew straight across. You could hand sew that if you want it to be invisible, do a ladder stitch. But I'm kind of thinking no one's going to look in the bottom of my, um, my tablet case. And we'll push the lining inside and I'm going to top stitch around here because the lining wants to bounce back out again and I want that to I want the seam to sit right on the top so we'll take the accessory compartment off here so I've got a free arm and I like to start sewing normally from a seam got a thread there it's going to annoy me That's, that was noisy. Um, that tends to be the most invisible place to start and stop your stitches, just in case they don't line up together. So under there you go. I'm going to lengthen the stitch again because this is just a top stitch. Pull the flap out. And around we go. Stop with the needle down. Pull the flap away from the seam. Make sure that's nice and flat on the inside. If you're a bit concerned about top stitching, then use the same colour thread. So you won't see if your stitches are a little bit wobbly. Little down. Then when it comes to this side, I'm just folding everything so that go on. So that the seam's sitting right on the top. So just keep manoeuvring this around. You can see how easy this is to sew as well. It's a really lovely fabric. I've been using this one for years. Um, and I have, I've made a skirt out of it before now. But for bags, it is just beautiful. A lot of um, laminated fabrics are really, really stiff. So this isn't like a, a plastic coating, it's PU coating, which gives it that incredible softness. So it's easy to work with. It's got a nice sheen to it as well. It's not shiny. Laminates, or like a faux leather look with a shiny fabric it tends to look a bit cheap, particularly in reds. I don't know why reds, reds can be a bit dodgy sometimes. But this is just a really lovely quality. So that, if, I'd, <laughs> if I could have found my magnetic clasp, that would be my little bag finished. Got a few threads on there. So nicely top stitched. I think that's a nice finishing touch. And we better just make sure this fits. 
It's a really, really simple little project to make. Um, a handle on the top would have looked nice, wouldn't it? Because then it would look like a, a little briefcase kind of thing. So that would, again, normally have the snap on there. Could have been a little bit snugger, but I think an inch all the way around um, is, a, is a nice... You can put other things in there as well then, so you've got a little bit of room if you've got, I don't know, pens or anything like that. But a useful little pouch, I think. So, let's have a look at the rest of... I better leave that out, did not I? I'll be taking it home. Um, at the rest of the colours that we have for you. So, I use the indigo there. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I can't hear what it's saying. Um, Angela has put a, <laughs> a talking sewing machine on the Facebook page. Oh, I'll have a listen to that later on. That looks so funny. I wish they did. <laughs> I talk to my sewing machine all the time. It'd be nice if it talked, but maybe it wouldn't be so nice. Um, and that was the Sasha's bite. That's so funny. OK. I'll save that for next time. These are all back in stock. I guess I'll lock that out. Um, the mustard already, this tends to be your favourite colour. We've already got low stocks of this one. So, that machine is so funny. Um, 140 wide, this one. Remember, it's of dressmaking quality. You've got that little bit of give in it, which gives it its comfort. But this is what I love. It melts. It's so incredibly soft. You can't do that with a lot of laminates. They'd feel uncomfortable and cracky and not at all nice. But that's the knitted back, which gives it that little bit of flexibility. It doesn't make it bouncy. So if you're making bag handles out of this, you're not going to have a bouncy bag. But it just gives it give, and it's got a really nice, really nice sheen to it. Uh, we're running low on this one again. Not surprised. It's only seven pounds ninety nine. Um, I've smocked with it before as well. I'll bring that in next time we have the um, uh, one of these um, these fabrics on my show. I made was it a round one? I made one. You know those round nineteen fifties style smock cushions where they all gather into the middle and you put a button on either side. I made one out of red, um, and those are hand stitched from the top. The ones that I made were hand stitched from the top. Um, and it just sews beautifully. I don't, you need a thimble, but you can sew by hand with it. It's, it's beautiful. Um, you can embroider on it. Now, I've used this with an embroidery machine before, but do put some stabiliser on the back of it because it's got that bit of stretch. And that's really pretty, really pretty as well. So that's the mustard. That's going to be the first one to go. Um, we've got the brown. This is the dark brown. They go nicely together, don't they? That would, that would make a really stylish... I'm Gladstone bag. Wouldn't that... Or a carpet bag. Wouldn't that look lovely? So that's the dark brown. The taupe. That looks really classic. Oh, look at the black. Look at the first black. Bumblebee colours. That looks striking. Goes with anything. Could it go with the... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. That's going to be the first one to go, though. Um, this one is the dark brown. This looks expensive, doesn't it? Oh, imagine a skirt out of this one. Nice little pencil skirt with a vent at the back. Oh, and then maybe um, contrasting pockets, um, so, or side pockets, but where you can just see the uh, maybe a flap on the side in a cotton would look really, really nice. And you can mix different weights of fabric together like that. There's, oh, it looks like melted. It looks like a chocolate advert, doesn't it? We need, <laughs> we need two jars of milk going in there. <laughs> It's like Bourneville. Oh, no, no, no. Belgian. Definitely Belgian. Um, again, it's £6.99. You can see how soft that is. It's just, it's the most amazing fabric. I, I absolutely love it. Then we move on. Do you look at the taupe? Another really classy colour. These are like the Romeo the Burberry colours. Very upmarket kind of colours. And let me... Oh, if you've gone for canvases before, the duck egg looks really nice. But let's just have a look at... Doesn't that look lovely? Even if you make it a bag and this was the lining, that looks so special. 
I wonder if we have... Oh, that one. That looks nice as well. You can't just go for one piece of fabric, can you? Not when there's so many things that you can mix with it. All back in stock. We sell out of these so often. We have the black. And you can probably see the grain uh, more clearly on the black. Because it, it does have a grain, it, it, very much like leather. And again, look at the drape and the sheen. It's not shiny, it's not plasticky. It's, it's just really soft and lovely. So I'm look, looking for things I can mix with it, but I think anything goes with black, doesn't it? But the red. So again, even with red and black. But even with the red, it doesn't have that shine. It still looks really expensive. And this will go, oh, oh, that would be nice. With the dots, that's fun, isn't it? That'll make a nice lining. Um, butterflies, no, too much pink, too much pink. Um, mm, what have we got with a bit of red in it? Oh, yes. Or that. Oh, that one. That's nice. That's not my favourite fabric. That's my favourite fabric out of everything we have for you today. Love that print. Or maybe that one. No, that one's my favourite fabric. <laughs> nice to see new fabrics, though. And then finally, that really deep, rich blue we're calling indigo. I can't remember how they went. Um, which is this one. I have cut into this, remember, so you, you will get the full lot. We're not going to send this one out. Um, each of these, just £6.99. Again, look at the softness. It's so lovely to work with. Try it. Give it a try. If you haven't used it before, give it a try. You're getting plenty. I'm still watching this same machine talking to me. We must have a listen in the break. Um, Glitterman threads. We launched these yesterday and they were really, really popular. So do you want to see the tape measure first? Could you get bonuses with these? So um, the tape measure is quite clever because it's got um, inches on one side, centimetres on the other, which isn't anything special. Um, but all of the centimetres are different colours uh, for each 10 centimetres. So it's easy to see where your 10 centimetre mark is. Um, these are lovely quality and the kind of thing that I would pay £3 each for. So you've got, um, was it 10, one, two, three, four, six, uh, 10 spools there for £17.99. Um, I would quite happily, quite happily pay £25 for that and still think I got a bargain. Um, it's polyester, perfect for using with your PQ. Um, it's, it's not a shiny polyester like the, you know, the rayon type of embroidery threads. It looks like cotton, um, so easy to use with, uh, with cotton fabrics, with heavier weights of fabric, because polyester tends to be really strong. Um, so if you are making bags, if you're making something where you really need a strong seam, if you've got weight in there, then that is perfect for you. So bonus measuring tape, nice little package there if you're thinking about gifts as well. You can never have too much thread. The second set is more your basics. I think these are like the school uniform colours. So there's reds and navies and blacks in this one. Uh, and your white and you've got your neutrals. Good for quilting too because you've got your neutral threads that tend to disappear um, into your pattern fabric. This is only £14.99. And we've got eight of those in total. And then bonus fabric clips included as well. These are such good prices for Gutterman thread. So we... Um, we shouldn't have had those on the show today, but they were so popular yesterday, we thought we'd show you those all over again. Don't want you to miss out on the deals. We do try and get these back again um, when they sell out, but um, don't know when these days, do we? So stock up on those. We have bag bottoms and handles for you. These are prim. But that's really noisy, isn't it? Sorry about that. I think something a little bit shop bought in a bag gives it a really professional look. And these handles can be notoriously difficult to make, uh, particularly getting the round bits round at the bottom, so I find anyway. Um, you hand sew these on, 
my tip would be, I know we haven't got any in stock at the moment, but you use your Gutemann HT2 glue, not where the stitch holes are, but just put a little bit of glue in the centre, then pop them on your bag, because these are really stiff, so you're not going to be able to sew, um, to tack them, or to pin them. Um, so let the glue dry, that'll make the, the bond stronger anyhow, because you're hand sewing these on, and then use some embroidery thread, maybe in a contrast colour, or if you're putting these onto maybe a black bag, use a black thread so they stand out, and then just sew through those, so that, that when the sewing is obviously going to be a bond, but the glue is going to be really strong to hold them in place. So if you've already got your glue, that's what I'd use those for. So that's the red, and we've got a red base to go with that as well. So it's the same kind of uh, material, um, and it's got the same texture to it, so you get a really nice finish to your bag as well. So you've got brief instructions on the back as how you're going to use it. You've got a QR code on there, actually on both pieces. So you'll have a link through to a video to explain how to use them and to make a bag very similar to the one that's at the top there. So it's got a nice big square base. That's £11.99. Then we have a taupe and a dark brown combination. I'd go for dark brown. Dot brown PU and the tote bottom and then dark brown handles and then I'd use a tote coloured thread to sew the handles on. So your base is £11.99 and it's quite, quite a big base and then your dark brown handles, don't have to go for the base and the handles but I think it's got a nice finishing touch. It's just the same colour, it goes really well um, or if you're making a tote bag or if you're making a mustard bag, just £14.99, and they're really nice and sturdy as well. Okay, I'm trying not, not to make lots, and I know how noisy that is at home. Where are we? We've gone over again, haven't we? All this chatting and talking, we get to the end of the hour and we just carry on. Um, that's everything we have for you in this hour. If you just joined us, have a look on the website and you'll see everything listed there that we've, we've been featuring in the show. All of those new fabrics and a, and a little demo for a pouch. We've got lots coming up in the next hour as well. We've got some tools for you. We have the uh, freezer paper back and we've got a whole load of sashiko. sashiko Sashko kits coming up in the next hour as well. I'll go and put my teeth in and I'll see you again in about three minutes time. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective. Everybody has a different take on things and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way 
to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, welcome back to Sewing Street. Uh, my name's Debbie, and uh, in this show we're going to be featuring some, uh, we've got Sashko, we've got books, and we've got some, some tools that you might not have seen before that I think you're going to find really useful for sewing as well. I wanted to mention though, our overlocker threads. Um, perfect for use with any kind of overlocker that you have. Um, there's four colours of each, so up to four threads uh, overlockers would be perfect. Um, and they're in all of your basic colours as well. If you just open this up and show you, we have four black, oops, oh, oh dear, four of the black, and then four of the dark greys. There's four of the light greys, four white, four off white and four of the beige as well. And they're, they're, they're a decent size spool, but there's an awful lot on there. This is going to last you a long, long time. You've got 1,200 meters on each one of those. So personally, I've got a four thread overlocker. I've got the same overlocker that we're going to be featuring in the next hour, um, which is the air thread. Um, I tend to use three threads instead of four because it makes everything last a little bit longer. But if you want to do four thread overlocking, then you've got these and they're, they're nice basic colors as well. Um, you don't tend to see overlocking stitches, so it's not so important to match the color of the thread to the color of your fabric. Um, but I just wanted to show you those really briefly because they're a bargain. Have a look on the website for those and get ahead of the game. Right, let's take a look at our snaps box first of all. These are so fun. If you're making children's clothing, if you're making, um, let me go out the way, dolls' clothes, they're so easy to use and they're really nice bright colours as well. Let's find a piece of fabric for you and I'll show you. So the tool's not included, but it fits in there perfectly. Inside here, you've got a whole rainbow of snaps. So they're, they're plastic poppers, basically but they're really simple to apply. So the kind of things, you know, you see across the bottom of, um, of your duvet covers, um, but for bag making, these are perfect. I wouldn't put them on too thick of fabrics, but something up to a denim weight would be absolutely fine. And they're really, really easy to apply as well. So you're getting the box, you can fit more in there as well. There's a big long space there. You do get more dividers, so you can divide those up. When you finish using these, you can either go for refills or use it for something else. But you've got a really handy toolbox. And when you do close it over, it's got ridges at the side here, so things don't fall out as you move it. So you don't get all of the colors mixed up when you're in transit. So you'll need your tool, which we have for you as well. And it's so simple to apply these. So each part has, that's stuck together, a sharp bit, so that's got a point on it. And then that one's got a recess. And then you've got another one that has a bit that sticks out. 
and another pointy bit. So those are the four pieces that you need to go together. So let's take our pointy bit, mark on your project where this needs to go and just push the point through the fabric so you don't need to punch a hole first of all. And then your second side, so this is the outy bit, goes in the top like so. These parts of the, um, of the tool, these are removable, but these come in the box. So the bits that come with the tool, there's a few bits with those, are all the metal bits, um, but these are in the box with your, with your poppers. And the smooth bit sits in that white cup. And when you close it over and give it a light squish, you don't have to press really, really hard. That's it. That's now on. And that's really nice and secure. So the spike that sits through the centre of the top piece or the underneath piece, as it'll be, squishes out. So that's all flat inside and that's what holds it together. So then let's do the same with the, the second half of this. So again, push it through. Measure and mark where you need that to be. Push it through from the back. And then the opposite side sits on top of here like so. Cup that underneath. Squish from the top. And that's on. And that's as easy as it is. So that's how you're going to look from the top. And then press them together. They're nice and strong as well. You might not think that they would be because they're plastic, but they really are strong. So when you open it up, you can hear the click, can't you? You can hear how strong that is. So what about children's clothing? It could be straps on pinafore dresses or dungarees and things like that. If you're making clothes for babies and you've got the poppers all the way through um, underneath the legs on romper suits and baby grows and things like that if you're making your own. For closing uh, flaps on bags, could have used this on the, the pouch I made earlier on, couldn't I? Um, then they're really useful and I love the colours as well, it just makes them fun to use. Can you imagine if you've got poppers down the front of a, a, a child's outfit, uh, so using them instead of buttons maybe, but you have the whole rainbow colours, so you're not just using the same one. So maybe on a plain shirt you've got a red one and a blue one and a black one and then a pink one and I think that'd be loads of fun. And there's loads in there as well. So the whole box, which is absolutely full, of light blue, dark blue, turquoise, yellows, orange, reds, black, green and white, um, £32.99 is the price there. And there's loads in here, there's hundreds. So they're going to last you a long time. And we don't have any on the website at the moment, but you can get refills for these things as well. So don't worry that you're going to run out and you won't be able to get hold of any anymore. So that's that one. Your pliers are only £12.99. And the pliers are really versatile, so not just for use with these. Um, they come with a little snap thing that goes over the top to lock them, like so. So that keeps them closed. Um, you can punch holes with them, with the, with the bits that you've got. And you can apply metal press studs and things with these as well. So it's not just an extra 12 pounds 99 to go with your snaps. They're, they're really, really useful as well. Um, and again, £12.99 is your price for those. And we do have some metal press studs on the website as well. Um, they're little mini ones. So they're, again, perfect for baby clothes, perfect if you're making dolls as well. So if you wanted to add those to your order. Remember, you don't pay any more PMP the more you order. It's not 3 95 per item, it's 3 95 per order, orders, throughout the whole day. So if you come back later on, you think, you know, oh, I've, I've, ordered, uh, I've ordered the pliers, I wish I'd have gone for those metal press studs. Just come back again, even if it's at 11 o'clock tonight, and we're not going to charge you any more for your postage. Only good to you. Okay, we have freezer paper. What we do with freezer paper on a sewing show? Um, freezer paper is incredibly versatile for applique. So it's not just for wrapping sandwiches up and putting them in the freezer. Sorry, no, this is really noisy again. It's got a waxy coating um, on one side that when you iron it, it melts and it sticks to your fabric. But it doesn't leave wax in your fabric. It doesn't leave any kind of sticky residue. It literally just holds your, um, your pattern in place or your paper in place. So if you have a pattern that you need to transfer onto paper, so maybe you're, um, you've got a pattern that's in a book and you don't want to cut your book up, then simply trace your pattern onto the, uh, onto the paper. If you shine a light behind that, you will be able to see through it and then iron it onto your fabric. So let's take a little piece of fabric. 
let's take a big piece of fabric. It's a, it's a nice um, medium as well if you're if you have a, a paper pattern, you know, some of them can be really flimsy, um, that you want to copy. So you don't cut the size of your pattern out. You want to trace it onto um, another piece of paper. If you want, if you want to, say you've got, say you've got a dress pattern and you want to make it in two sizes. As soon as you cut into one size, that's it. The dress pattern is now that size. You can't suddenly make it bigger or smaller. Um, but if you trace off the outline of the size that you want to onto your freezer paper, you can iron this onto your pattern and you can still tear it away again and then you can re-iron it onto your fabric so you don't have to pin it while you're cutting it out. So all you can do is pop this on your fabric and use a nice warm iron. And that's nice stuck. I could be, say, pattern making. This could be for um, applique, maybe. Transferring patterns, I think, is what you're going to be using it for most of all. But another, another, another clever thing about this um, freezer paper is that it's printable. So now that's ironed onto my fabric and it's stuck there, if you have an inkjet printer, don't use uh, a laser jet printer because your laser jet will melt the wax inside because it gets hot and um, so you'll ruin your printer but if you have um, an inkjet printer cut this down to an A4 size or A3 whatever size your printer is and then you can pass that through so if you are for instance English paper piecing you could print off all of your hexagons or whatever shape you have onto the, fab uh, onto the um, freezer paper and then cut out the pieces and then you can use those pieces to iron onto your fabric and actually use them as your paper pieces and then just peel them away afterwards and it's quite thin so it's going to be really easy to peel away so it's incredibly useful um, if you want to print onto fabric you can print up put the freezer paper through on its own if you print on freezer paper if you want to print onto fabric and you have an inkjet printer you can print on fabric and when you iron the ink it becomes permanent so use your um, freezer paper as a carrier on the back of your fabric because you're not going to feed a piece of fabric into your inkjet printer it just it's not going to happen but when you have a carrier on the back like so it will feed in if you have a um a fabric or a cutting machine like a, like a scan and cut that kind of thing then you can use this as a carrier on the back of your fabric because again with cutting machines um if you don't use any kind of carrier then the blade's going to tear the um the fibres in the fabric, it, it won't work very well. You need some kind of paper backing on them. So instead of using things like heat and bond, which will work, but you're going to have glue left on the back of your fabric. Great if it's applique, um, but if you just want to cut out the fabric shapes, then freezer paper is going to be the way to go with that. See how versatile it is. And on top of all of that, you can put your sandwiches in the freezer in it. <laughs> so you're getting a lot there. I'm sure you're going to find even more uses. There's some ideas on the packaging actually. Oh no, that's how to put them into a <laughs> into put them into the freezer. Um, arts and crafts used for sketching, drawing, painting, making banners for school events and get-togethers. Um, for applique for quilting, we've mentioned that. And every day anywhere, keep your house mess free. Draw liners. Wouldn't have even thought about that or lay down to protect work surfaces. So it's, it's just incredibly versatile. Who knew? <laughs> yes, I wonder if, who are they? Reynolds Kitchens ever knew the kind of thing that people would be making from their freezer paper. So that's that, that's how that works. But again, really useful. If you have a look um, online, take a look on YouTube or somewhere like that, uh, on Pinterest and just put freezer paper projects and you're going to get lots of different people coming up with loads of different ideas as to how you can use your freezer paper. Uh, you're getting a lot on here as well. There's 12 metres on the roll all together. And how wide are we? Oh, I'm upside down now. Um, 12 point, oh no, 12 point, 40, mm. 4.64 metres, 12.19 metres, 38 centimetres wide. <laughs> so you get a nice big roll there as well. It's really, really useful. Now then, we've got some other useful bits and bobs for you too. It's the ironing sheet. So this will enable you to convert your tabletop 
into an ironing board. You've got uh, the reflective fabric on the back of there and it's nice and padded. To be honest, I wouldn't put it on my oak dining table. Um, but it does create an ironing surface with markings on there, which you, which you may find really useful as well. Um, it's £33.99 and it's really, really big too. Let me turn that around so it's the right way so you can see. So it's in centimetres, this one. So it just means they've got pockets on the front there as well. It's a good idea. Um, so you can have this next to your sewing machine. It's got a little pink, it's got a pink cushion on it too, look, so it's really versatile. You could use it as your sewing machine mat if you wanted to, because sewing machines tend not to be this big, and then just the, use the little ironing um, area at the side of it. But again, it's really useful. I thought that was upside down. It's got a, a thread catcher on the side there as well. Oh, that's a big noise that way so as this sits off the end of your table you've got storage pockets in here and then you've got a removable thread catcher as well so you can put your your ends of your threads and your bits of fabrics in there and when you've got your pin cushion there too and it all rolls up for easy storage as well so that's your ironing sheet but if you know when we get out of the house again you can go to classes or if you're traveling maybe you've got a motorhome i know a lot of you have motorhomes and travel around and do a bit of sewing while you're out there um you wouldn't take your ironing board with you would you but you can i mean you can get little boards you know like the sloth ones and the spots ones that we had on the show the other day um or the little one that i've got here but that's the thing they're little so here you can convert a larger table into an ironing board and then this rolls up so it doesn't actually take very much space for storage so roll it up, pop it in your bag, and you're ironing on the go. Good for travelling as well, isn't it? So that's the sheet. This one is the blanket. So same kind of idea, it's in centimetres again. You've still got your markings on here, so you've got 60, 45 and 30 degree markings. But this one doesn't have the pockets on the front, but it's the same kind of thing. So it's a little bit smaller than the sheet. Um, still nicely padded and you have the reflective backing on there to help to protect the surface that you're ironing on. And that one's only £24.99. and pence. You can pin into it as well. It's got um, like a sponge inside it so it's nice and soft and squishy and pinnable. And of course it's, um, it's cool washable as well. £24.99. Right, the... show the iron finger this is a clover tool and this is one of those tools that if you've seen it before maybe you've seen it at a shop or seen it on the website and you think what on earth <laughs> it's yeah, it looks like a, a cooking implement instrument um, but it's really versatile it's made from silicone and it's heat resistant so you if you run the iron over it it really doesn't matter um, it's nice and solid but it's got a bendy end so it's a little bit like a spatula but that's really useful as well for I know I haven't got a, anything with a, an actual seam but you can flatten seams with it it's not going to give the same kind of press as your roll and press but it just gives you a bit of versatility so you can do that you can flatten the seam out like so but this is soft in this direction but it's rigid in the opposite direction and you've got a square end and a round end and this is going to be really useful for pushing out corners so the square end for getting right into the corners you know where you pick up your scissors normally and then you make a hole in your work right tools for the job so that's going to push out a square corner the round side here, if I'd have put a round flap on my bag earlier on, then you can curve out the roundness of the flap like so. But it's called an iron finger because you can use it when you're ironing as well. So I haven't got anything with the seam. Can't be, oh, I could take the dress. No, I shan't. So I'm talking to myself now. Um, if you wanted to press a small seam open, so if that crease was a seam, you can put your iron finger underneath the seam and then just give it a quick press. And the beauty of that is that you're only pressing the seam. So if you're pressing a seam open here, some fabrics, when you're pressing them, you'll get the line of the edge of the fabric. So where the raw edge is and you turn it over and you can see the lines down the side. And that's, it doesn't, doesn't look very good. 
So here you're just going to put your iron finger underneath. Could have used a coloured fabric, couldn't I? That would have been a bit better. And then give it a press. So you're, only, you're pressing the seam open, but you're not making an indentation of the raw edges into your fabric. So that's really useful. Um, let me choose a colour. You'll see that better. But what you can also do, if you want to do some very fine work, if you just want to press here, and you know you're holding the the seam open maybe, and you, uh, it's or just oh now it keeps bouncing back. With the iron finger, you can iron right up to it. You can um, the iron is on. You can iron right up to it. You can iron right over it. So that's why it's the finger, because it saves your finger from the iron. See, but that's just completely heat resistant. <laughs> And again, it's only £15.99, but it's one of those things you just think it's, it's really, really useful. Even the round end on the opposite end, just for holding things down. I'm thinking things like um, small patchwork pieces where you've... You know what I use your stiletto for? This is like a larger version of the stiletto. So it's a really versatile uh, little gadget. Oh, Sharon's messaged in. Oh, you're on Facebook. Let's have a look. Um, oh, I'll watch that video. I listened to that video in the break, by the way. I'll listen. That was so funny. Uh, Angela, sorry. Um, read the freezer paper. Can you also use it to transfer on the fabric designs to hand embroider? If you cannot draw, you can put on all sorts of designs that you've photocopied out of the... <laughs> out of the, out of the sewing books um, instead of using more difficult ways to transfer onto fabric. You can. So I thought you were asking me a question. I read, can you? You can. That, I've not done that before, Sharon. That is such a good idea. So where do you, where do you put the designs there? Do you, on, cause how do you actually transfer? If you draw your design and then put the freezer paper over the top, does that pick up the design so then you can transfer it onto fabric? That would be genius. You can use it for stenciling as well. Um, right, so that's iron finger. We're doing the roll and press next. So no ironing board needed for a roll and press. This looks very simple, but there's a lot of technology gone into this little um, device. Um, you see the shape of the barrel shape here. So it's curved, which means that all of the pressure goes into the centre, so it kind of concentrates all of the pressure on the very central bit. It means that you don't have to put so much pressure on from your wrist. So you get a really nice crease, but without having to press on hard. And of course, there's no heat included there either. So again, if I've got my fabric here, I'll just try and put a crease in this, just randomly. So not pressing on particularly hard. And that looks like it's been ironed, doesn't it? So that could be putting creases in, it could be taking, um, opening your seams out and pressing seams open. So again, you don't have to plug it in, you don't have to wait for it to heat up, you don't have to worry about do I need steam or do I not, or putting lots and lots of pressure on something. Um, you know, even with rotary cutters sometimes you have to stand up to use them, a lot of us can't. So this is just, you know, a, a no pressure way of putting creases in to any kind of woven and cotton fabrics. And that's just £15.99. Another one of those tools that you'll just say, I wish. You'd be so pleased that you bought it. You know, sometimes with gadgets, you think, oh, I'm never going to use that. But then when you do, when you get it home, you say, actually, that's really good. I'm so glad I bought that. Then, yeah, it gives, it gives that a try. They're normally really popular, these as well. So just to let you know, pop that back in there. Oh, now then, we have an add a quarter ruler as well. So these are for foundation paper piecing generally but of course they're rulers as well um, in a color that tends to stand out against any color of fabric so you've got uh, that your lovely yellow color um, so we've got two sizes in here you've got your two by 12 and your two by six so that's your little one and the big one um, measurements in inches across here but then you've got a raised bit here which measures a quarter of an inch now there's lots of um, different things you can use this for. You could use that to make your quarter of an inch seam allowance. 
so you can measure and mark it. But it was being devised initially for foundation paper piecing. So as you're putting these together, I know this is partly made up. Um, so you've sewn your seam, you fold back your paper. This has been a well-used one. It's, a, it's one of my favourite patterns. Um, you'll, and then you'll need to trim this down to a quarter of an inch. So with the raised side down, that sits across the edge of your folded paper. And then you use your rotary cutter to trim this off and you'll get that perfect quarter of an inch. So instead of taking your, your regular ruler, and what's your alternative to that? Maybe you've got something like this. And then you've got to line that up. Hang on a minute. Because that's got to be perfect. So then you'd line that up and then cut it. That's just so much easier. And then you can use your rotary cutter with that as well. So they've been designed to use with foundation paper piecing, but of course you can use them for other things as well. It's a versatile little ruler. Um, but it makes life quicker when you're doing things like these. And you're getting two of those for your $24.99. So remember, 2 by 12 and um, 2 by 6 inches is your price for those. That's a good price for two rulers, isn't it? So add a quarter, but add a quarter plus. More tools that I think you're going to find really, really useful. We bought you um, a brand new Moda layer cake yesterday. I shouldn't have shown it here today, but uh, I'm going to anyway. Um, and here there are 42 10 by 10 inch square pieces of fabric. Shall I open it? Can I? Let me see if I can do it like that. And then I shan't take it all the way off. There, and then we can have a good old look. So there, there's such pretty fabrics in here as well, but they all match. So Layer Cakes, um, brand name by Moda, 10 inch squares, but they all coordinate. So if you were to just sew these all together and make a, a patchwork um, quilt, and that would look absolutely striking, but you have got enough to cut into. So you could cut each one of these into five inch squares which would be a charm in Moda language. But see how they all blend. So we go from the mints to the pinks, to the stripes and back to mints and deeper colors. And then the greens carry through with peaches. Tiny prints as well. So perfect if you're doing smaller patchwork projects. So you don't lose the design when you're cutting out small pieces. So again, more mints. Really ditzy little designs. So pretty. Are they all, are they all different? I think they're all different as well. 44 different fabrics. Um, if you have a look on the website, we do have a jelly roll version available for you as well. So the two there could work well together. Aren't they pretty? Really fresh. Oh, we've even got a white on white. I skipped through that one yesterday. More ditzy flowers and leaves. So very spring. Very pretty. And very useful. There's a story behind a layer cake and I can't, can't remember what it was. If you, if you know, then do let me know. It has to be something to do with an actual cake, doesn't it? Doesn't tell you on the packaging. Packaging. Um, it does tell you how to slice a layer cake. So if you get this home, you think oh, I don't know what to do with it now. Um, there's instructions on how to cut them into um, the squares. I'll send about the five-inch squares, like a charm pack. How to make your quarter-square triangles, um, and then cut those into smaller triangles again. Um, cutting different sizes of blocks, just cut them in half. Cutting so you know there's so so much you can do with these, or you can just use them as they are. Hmm. No, nothing about layer cakes on there. There must be a reason. We have a little bit of Sashko. A little bit of Sashko in your life. Um, if you haven't done Sashko before, we have a book for you. It 
it was standing up. Um, a simple sashiko book. So this is a great introduction to sashiko. Um, it's by Susan Briscoe. And you've got some nice projects in here as well. So not only are you going to learn about sashiko and the different techniques and the different types of stitches, so everything you need to get started, the tools that you need, uh, fabric markers, threads and that kind of thing. Then we go through into the different stitches that you can use. And then projects. And these are simple projects for you to make. And they're full projects, so these aren't just ideas of what you can do. They are full projects with instructions on how to make them. So things like little greetings cards, um, a taster of Sashiko if you like, try it out, smaller projects. Then moving on to homewares. With all of these different designs, you're getting templates as well. Um, got placemats. And little coasters, storage racks. So Susan's actually been in before, hasn't she? I haven't met her. Um, we've got samplers, they look really striking. Wall hangings. I like books that aren't just technique based. So you're learning the technique and then you can use those techniques to create things. Of course, you can use the techniques to create anything that you like. But there's lots of inspiration in this little book. Now, it's only £6.99. And it's, it's, a, it's a great price. RRP 9.99. Sorry, Sis. Sorry. Um, visit authors are so poor, it's no wonder, is it, when places like this exist? Uh, again, that's just £6.99 for Simple Sashiko. And oh, we've, got some, we've got some kits as well. Oh, over you go. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have white coasters now the coasters have we got the white the gray and we've got the blue don't have the blue um they're different designs on each one of them and the markings were already put onto the fabric um so those are the four designs that you're going to be able to sew the marks are on the fabric but they wash away afterwards so don't worry too much about um recreating every one of those stitches to perfection um, if you do go a little bit awry, then it's not going to be noticed when the, um, when the lines are taken away. Um, also in the kit, you will receive your dark blue sashiko thread and you've got three sashiko needles as well for £22.99. I can show you, we don't have these on the show. These were the navy ones that we had, but that's the kind of size that you're going to make. And you've got fabric for the back as well. So you make four that size, different designs in the white. So it's like the negative of that one. They're going to be the white background with the dark blue thread. So that's everything that you're getting there. Um, if, you, um, if, you, if you are interested and you've never sashcoed before, if you have a look on our YouTube channel, so it's the Sewing Street uh, YouTube channel, and go back to the 2nd of April, um, there is a video there of Cara Aikman, which she very kindly filmed at home, um, showing you how to create, I think it was, we did some of these, didn't she? To create some of the different projects and showing you the techniques of making them as well. So take a look at that show for more information. Um, and Susan Briscoe is actually here on the 24th of February, so if you want to learn a little bit more about her, then again, take a look at that YouTube channel. So next up, we've got the coasters in grey. I'd love to see these made up, because these have the ecru thread, and I think the greys and the creams are such an elegant combination. Um, and your three needles are included as well. All for £22.99. And again, you've got four different designs. So different to each other, but also different to the, um, the white option. So if you want for both sets, you're going to be learning eight different techniques. And then, of course, you've got plenty of threads. You've still got your needles. You can go on to use those with other fabrics as well. £22.99 for those. The, this is the cream. So this is a placemat. It's not the same, but that's the kind of size you're looking at with the back of the fabric as well. So white background with your navy thread. And you can see this has got uh, almost a, a chevron kind of look to it. Needles included, £22.99. Have a look at more of these on, on the website if you, if you don't want to hang around and wait for me. This is the olive set. I, I like this one. I just think it's so stylish. It's got tiny little crosses all over it. And those are going to be in a crew. And your needles. So that's what you're going to make. 
classy, isn't it? Love these colours. It says olive. I always think olive's green, but it's more of a dark taupe to me. Um, so you've got your ecru thread and your needles for £22.99. And then the natural, again, this is the blue version. Um, that's a partly made up sample just to show you the technique. Because I thought, looking at this first of all, that you sew circle after circle after circle, and you don't. You sew around one and go up and down like so. So Cara actually made this up so that, um, or left it unfinished so you can see the way that it works. And remember, all of these stitch marks will disappear afterwards, um, after washing. So don't worry if you miss a little bit. So needles are included. You've got your dark blue thread. And there's your kit with all of your instructions and everything in there as well. For £22.99p. And then we have the blue version, which is this one. Um, you can put some uh, wadding or padding behind that. If you're going to use it as a placemat, it might be an idea to have some of uh, the heat reflective uh, wadding. You don't have to make a placemat. You get in the front and the back, put a lining inside it, and you can make a bag out of that. Or use it as a panel if you've got some natural coloured fabric, I think would look nice, and um, put a nice thick board around it. And then maybe use the techniques that you've been learning, either from the book or from experience, to do some designs around the border as well. Then you can just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, can't you? Um, so we have the acru thread and your three needles. And that's how it comes to you for £22.99. So those are all of the kits. Again, you can order on the website or take a look at more details on the website on sewingstreet.com. But let me give you a recap of some of the fabrics that we had in the preview show. These are all new and they're really lovely. We've got the, oh, was, was this the tulips one? We have these beautiful floral fabrics in all kinds of colours. I love the one with the striped background. I love the, it's my favourite one. I'd make a dress out of that one. And we've got the same print on the grey background as well. So, shall we show you this one? So, it's a poplin, 145 centimetres wide. So, it's a, it's a dressmaking um, fabric, but you can use it for other things as well. Nothing to say that you can't. So it's the same pink tulips on cream, but it's actually on pink. Um, but it's a really nice soft pink. I, I, that's so pretty. That would I would be making dresses with that. Um, tea dresses would look really nice. Um, strappy pinafore type dresses with big pockets on a gathered skirt, I think, would look lovely as well. Um, or maybe a nice soft fo floaty blouse. You can see how that drapes so well with frills around the sleeves or a smart shirt. Crisp white buttons down the front. But it could be bag making. It could be homewares. It's your cotton, you do what you like with it. So that was really busy in, in the first hour, so I just wanted to give you a, a reminder if you haven't seen it. And then you go to the website, oh, I love that pink flowery fabric, and then it's all sold out. Um, so at the moment we have some left if you wanted to order. Um, the flowers on pinstripes are lovely as well, and the two go really well together, actually. So this is just assorted flowers. They look like poppies to me, with a really soft pink, pink and cream pinstripe in the background fabric. Isn't that pretty? It's like meadow flowers. But very delicate. Um, the pinstripe in the background is barely noticeable, but it just adds a little bit of interest. And it's only £4.99. If you order more than one, by the way, if you wanted a metre of this or a couple of metres to make a dress with, wouldn't that be a pretty dress? Goes with my cardigan and everything. Um, then they come in, in one piece. So if you needed a couple of metres, order four and you'll get one two metre length. But they have been really, really busy for those. And the new, there's loads, have a look on the website, there's loads of new fabrics today. Lots of new things for you to play with. Um, we've got the pinstripe grey. It has a very different look with the grey background, but it's still really pretty. I'd still make a summer dress out of that. Again, in £4.99, 145 in width. 
and that really nice drape. It's a poplin, so it's a dressmaking fabrics. And let me give you a reminder as well of the PU fabric that we had in the previous hour. This is the indigo. I have chopped into this because I made a pouch. So this is again 145 wide and it is a faux leather like you've never seen before. It's so incredibly soft, it's easy to sew with, it's strong, it's got a knitted backing so it has a little bit of give. So you could make a skirt, I have made skirts out of this before. Um, you could make a jacket, you can make like the body of the jacket in this and then have a fine fabric in the sleeves. You can mix and match it together with cotton fabrics, with canvases. Um, they go so well with other fabrics. Use a pattern fabric as a lining on a bag, maybe. And we've got lots of colours for you as well. So this is the indigo. Isn't that a beautiful, rich, inky, dark fabric? Six ninety nine for half a metre. You could easily make a couple of bags out of that, even large ones. But I think you tend to find with bags you use it for part of the bag. So you'd make a flap in a different fabric, or maybe. Um, use this as the flap and then maybe some of those corner bits on the bottom of your bag would be quite nice. So make a bag base and then use fabric in the middle. So have a look on the website for the other colours. We've got red and dark brown and there's taupe and there's black. And we do have a little bit of the mustard left but that tends to be um, the most popular one. So check out if you want that one quickly. Yeah, I mentioned earlier on with the, uh, the Moda um, layer cake. cake. <laughs> Lair cake. <laughs> we've also, funny how things just come out your mouth. Um, we've got the matching jelly roll. And there are 40, 40 pieces, 40 strips altogether, two and a half inches wide. So it's twice the size of, an, of a fabric roll. Normally you expect to find 22 strips in a fabric roll. So you've got almost twice as many here for £29.99. And they're the same fabrics as I flipped through earlier on with these, um, with no repeats. So again, if you're, if you're patchworking, if you're making binding, not, not bias binding obviously, but if you're making binding, then that's going to be ideal for you. And £29.99. And it's Moda. It's a really, really good price. Oh, right. Are we out of time again? We've got only five minutes left. It's been, it's been so busy this morning. I'm ever so glad you're with us. Um, anything that you want to order, have a look on the website, which is sewingstreet.com. Uh, um, or you can order on the phone lines. And of course, you can send me a Facebook message as well. I've had lots of messages this morning. Oh, I lost my phone there for a minute. Um, oh, Sharon's got back to me about the freezer paper. You put the picture in the photocopying bit press photocopy and it copies onto it as it goes through. So it copies onto the paper side. So how do you get that onto your fabric? Or do you just iron it onto the fabric and then... Ah, so you embroider through and then tear it away afterwards. I'm going to try that. That's such a good idea. Oh, that's um, conversations I'm having with Sharon about the freezer paper and her ideas for transferring embroidery designs. Um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we've got visitors. <laughs> Two and a half metres away, of course. Um, sorry about that, it's just an expected to see a face coming around the door. There's never anybody in the building, it's quite bizarre. Um, and in fact, it's not so bizarre anymore. I think it's going to be really bizarre when people start coming back into the building. So at the moment, you pull up in the car park, there's no cars there, or maybe two. Um, and then you come into the building, and we did have a um, cleaner came around and vacuumed this morning, that was nice. And then it's just me and Kat in this huge, empty mansion. So to see a face pop around the corner, it's like, oh! <laughs> Another person. Um, anyway, I'm waffling on about nothing now, so let's um, have a little bit of a break. So we're back in about five minutes, and we have the um, air thread overlocker for you, and then one of the newest machines that we only launched last week, which is the 780 Plus. So I'll see you in about five minutes. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street, and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it.
My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, 
always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. For more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome back to Sewing Street. Um, I'm Debbie, and in this hour we're going to be taking a very quick look at our air thread overlocker, and then we've got this beautiful sewing machine to talk you around as well, which is the Elna 780 Plus. But let's take a look at your overlocker to start with. If you don't have one, why do we need one of those? If you're a dressmaker or if you're a budding dressmaker, then overlocking is going to finish off your seams, trim back your fabric as it works with the blade, and give you a professional finish to your work. So if you're wearing something that's shop bought at the moment, just have a look at the seams on the inside. That could be knitwear, it could be woven fabric, and you'll see that the edges are all finished off with a stitch that goes completely around the edge of the fabric. Um, two reasons for that. It looks neat and it makes the seams uh, last longer as well because it stops them from from fraying. You would never buy um, a garment from a shop that had a raw edge. That it just doesn't happen. You can use this as your seam, but it'll give you um, around about a quarter of an inch because it's variable um, seam allowance. So you will have to adjust your pattern. Normally dress making patterns are five eighths of an inch seam allowance, and this is going to be a little bit narrower. It's a four thread sewing machine that you can use three threads if you prefer. I've just got this one threaded up with different colours, which is a nice idea when you first get it home when you're practicing because you can identify the role of each each one of the stitches. So you've got two sewing needle uh, threads, which are these two, and then the upper looper and the lower looper, which take your thread around the outside of your fabric. So if it's a quick, it's about 1,250 stitches a minute. Um, the frightening thing for a lot of people about overlockers, this one isn't actually plugged in, but it's this malarkey. It's the threading, and on standard overlockers, it can be a bit of a nightmare. You don't have to thread, that's the beauty. You can tie your, your threads off and knot them and just run them through. But I do think it's good form to know how to thread an overlocker and understand the way that it works. Um, so th as soon as I open that door, normally, is when you go and flick off and watch another, sh another channel. Um, but this is an air thread overlocker, so you don't have to worry about anything that's going on here. All you're going to do is to pop your thread into each one of these little holes at the top, this is a pump at the side, and when you pump up and down, it draws the thread all the way through all of these loopers and comes out at the side. Even the needle threading is easy because you don't normally get a needle threader on with two needles, but with this one you do. So the threading is really, really simple. Um, another few features that this one has, it has a differential. Not all overlockers do which means that um, you've got two sets of feed dogs underneath here which you can regulate to feed at different times so you can have the the front feed dog pushing fabric through quicker than the back one's pulling it out which means you can gather or you can do the opposite and have the front one pulling the fabric away from the back and then you get a nice frill or a lettuce edge finish around the edge you can do rolled hemming with it as well um, with the blade up a lot of machines you'll need to remove the blade. The blade's actually inside here. Um, shan't touch it, that's really sharp. Um, but you can do a rolled hem, so a tiny hem of around about a quarter of an inch, all rolled over, finished off beautifully um, with some of the features that are on there as well. Now we have had this on air a few times before and we launched it on the 7th of April. So have a look, because I'm not going to demonstrate it today. I can answer any questions you like, but we're not switching this one on today. Um, so have a look at YouTube on the 7th of April, and I'll show you how to thread it and what the stitches are for, and you can do flat lot stitching with it as well, by the way. Um, or have a look online and take a look at all of the details there. But I think you'll find for speed, for professionalism, for finishing off, 
it's, it's not going to replace your sewing machine, but it, it'll make a very happy marriage by having the two together. And it's £699. I have the Janome version, which is exactly the same as this one, and I paid £850 for mine, and I would have paid that again. I, I, it's worth every penny of it to me. Right. It's... Oh, we've got some threads for you. I'm just dying, dying to get to this machine. Uh, we do have overlocking threads for you as well, which are these. So you've got four colours of threads of your basic colours. So we have four black. There's four dark grey. have four light grey. Four white. Four cream and four of the dark cream. Um, so 24 for those all together, which works out at £3.12 per, 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 per spool, <laughs> uh, per cone, I should say. And there's 1,250 metres on each one of those, so it's going to last you a long time. You do use a lot of thread when you're overlocking, um, which is one of the reasons why I tend to use three threads instead of four for, for most of my work, unless I want a really strong seam. Um, and you've got your basic colours. Um, I was saying previously, it's very rarely you see an overlock stitch. Um, so basic colours are probably going to be the best investment for you. Um, and they are 100% polyester, so it's a really nice strong thread as well. But it's not, not a shiny one. Feels like cotton. But it means it's washable up to 95 degrees as well. So £74.99 for all of those, 24 in total, is a really good buy. Brand new today. It's Madeira as well. And Madeira, another one of those um, brands of thread that I like. I was talking about threads yesterday and the importance of having a quality thread. Um, and it's the big brand names. The big brand names tend to have the better quality. And Madeira is one of those that's right up there too. And all neatly boxed up for you too. So great value. Um, if, you, if you're going for the overlocker, pop those into your order as well. Or if you've got your overlocker already, it, it will take you quite a while to get through all of those. Go to the sewing machine. Go to the sewing machine. Go to the sewing machine. So exciting to have a new sewing machine. And one that has so many features that my machine doesn't have. I, don't, I get quite envious. Um, ooh. But not move that. Um, so we'll have a look at what comes with it first of all. We'll look at that later. And then I'll give you a quick tour around. Uh, Morag says, when is it going to be dressmaking on, please? I'll have a look at the schedule when we get back. And we'll try and work something out. It's about time, isn't it? I agree with you there. Actually, in the last hour, a little face popped around the door and waved to me. That was our head of TV. So maybe we'll have a word. Hmm. So yeah, we've got overlockers, we've got amazing sewing machines, we've got your dressmaking with the fabric, by the time we had the dressmaking, I'm with you there, Maura. Um, and thank you, Sharon, that really makes sense now, and I'm going to have a go later on. That's the Facebook page, Sewing Street TV's Facebook page, if you want to send me a message. Give me any advice, or ask any questions. So, with your, there we go, that's where you go to, look, go to the visitor posts, and that's where I am until 11 o'clock this morning. Back again tomorrow morning there. So this is the box of goodies. It'll be empty when you get it home and all of your accessories will be in a separate bag. Um, but this is really lovely storage. I get excited about this as well. So these are all of the bits. I'll go through them really quickly because we have done shows with more detail of this machine so you can have a look back. But basically you have a roll 10 foot you have a quarter of an inch foot with a guide on the side. And then you have, where is it, a quarter inch foot without the guide on the side. Then we have a blind hem foot, an over edge foot. These are free motion embroidery feet. So you've got lots of different styles of these. So depending on what you prefer. I know Jane who, um, She's made a video for us, actually, I explained that in just a sec, but Jane from Elm was saying that she never goes back to, to using the regular darning foot. She always uses these little feet for free motion embroidery. I've not used those, to be honest, but I will do. They glide instead of hop. Then we have a closed toe satin foot. I have an open toed satin foot. More of these little embroidery threads. So that's a, a zigzag one, embroidery threads. Um, feet, an open toed, and your zipper foot. And then there's a buttonhole foot. It's like layers on a, a chocolate cake, isn't it? You've got a straight stitch plate. This is the one that you're going to be using for... No, you're not. 
you're going to be using this one for most of your straight stitching um, because this is your high performance plate. Oops, enough. With the high performance plate, it has one hole. You've got the straight stitch plate as well, which is similar, but it has one little hole. Um, so don't use any decorative stitches, but the machine is so smart. When you put this plate in, it recognizes the plate and it just grays out all of the stitches that you can't use. You will not be able to choose them because you've only got one hole. If you're using a decorative stitch, the needle will go from side to side and it will break. So the plate won't let you do that. The machine is very intuitive. But it also means that on fine fabrics, or sometimes when you start sewing right on the edge of the fabric, the feed teeth can draw the fabric down. It can be a bit of a nightmare, um, but this eliminates that. So it helps to stop stitches puckering and keeps them nice and flat and gives you a perfect stitch. And you can use this in conjunction with the special foot. That's your HP foot. And again, the machine will ask you to put that foot on, not verbally obviously um, and this time we've even got a high performance walking foot which clips onto the back of your um, take-up lever and then you've got your regular walking foot as well and you've got a button placement foot and there's loads more um, you've got a free motion or, or darning foot so that's the one that I've been used to using but you've also got your foot for ruler work so great for quilters if you've got uh, those kind of rulers um, that uses templates for quilting. And we have, we've got two free motion foots, one's an open toe, one's a closed toe, your preference. This little device helps to lift up your presser foot over thick seams, but it's also good for putting a shank into your button, button sewing on, button placement you mentioned, seam guide, everything else you kind of expect. So you've got your lint brushes and screwdrivers and spare needles and all of that kind of thing. So that's those. You also have a knee lifter. We haven't got time in this show, or we haven't got the space in this show to show you the extension table on the machine because it's huge, it's bigger than the table. But you're getting the extension table as well. And then this little device, which will be in your box, when this is on your, um, on your sewing machine, so your sewing machine slips in here, so your foot will be here, we're going in from that direction. This slips onto the side of the machine and it slides up and down, so you've got a seam guide there. So that would be that way around, as you're sewing. So sew, sew, sew this way, but this is your seam guide for your fabric. So I know your throat plate will have a guide on it. Your machine's actually got guides on it, but this has got a raised part here so you can bump your fabric up against it. So if you're a little bit nervous about sewing in a straight line or if you're doing something like your cross hatching and everything, it gets a bit tedious, doesn't it? You get distracted and then you, you get a bit of a wobble going on. Um, this is going to help you in that respect as well. So that's included. Um, you'll need to screw the feet on when you get it home, but then they're like bayonets. So you can take them off for storage and just put them back on again afterwards. And also you've got a really big foot pedal and then you've got a really little foot pedal. But the really little foot pedal goes on this plate. You don't have to use this. So your big foot pedal screws on here. <clears throat> your little foot pedal goes next door. That's a thread cutter. So you do have a thread cutter button on your machine, but if you find it easier to use a foot pedal, you just press your foot on there, snips your threads. That's clever, isn't it? <clears throat> you have a two-year warranty from Elna, um, and full instructions, and this is a really big instruction book, um, and it's all in English, so it's not, you know, a big book because there's lots of languages, uh, but this is really clear and easy to understand. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've had the machine at home for a couple of days, and I still haven't learnt all of the features from it. I've learnt how easy it is to use and the amazing stitches on there. Um, it's a big heavy machine as well, but there's, there's a lot in here. I've been sitting in the garden reading it actually, just thinking, oh, it does that, oh, it does that. There's so many, so many different things. But it is a simple machine to use. So you get a stylus as well, so you don't have to leave fingerprints on the machine itself. So should we have a tour? So this is it, look. I'm just going to turn this so you can see the screen. It's, honestly, it's so heavy, which I love because it doesn't vibrate. It doesn't shake around all over the place. But you know you've got a really sturdy, solid sewing machine. So if you've got thicker fabrics, particularly, I do a lot of bag making. Excuse me, I've just dropped all those all over the floor. 
um, I, I know that this is a machine that's really going to pack a punch. Stitches are inside here. Those are explained in the manual as well. Um, and there's a, oh, so many different stitches. A lot of the time with sewing machines, well, I think the majority of sewing machines that have stitch choices in the lid, um, they are chaptered like A, B, Cs. This is a little bit more easier to follow because you have utility buttonholes, and that's what they're named. So it's not chapter one, chapter two. Um, we've got heirloom stitches. We've got stitches that are recommended for quilting, satin stitches, bridge stitches, and then pictographs. You've got long decorative stitches and all of these decorative stitches as well. The ones that are in grey, I feel like a school teacher. Um, the ones that are in grey, you can mirror image in four directions. So you can flip them from one side to the other and you can flip, some, flip them upside down as well. It's a pair of glasses, look. There's, you see something new every time you see this. These are nice little stitches as well. They stitch one out. So it's a quilting stitch. Um, they look like little snowflakes, but that's actually for, for quilting. But the decorative stitches are just beautiful. You have a memory, so you can join all of these together. And you also have the alphabets. As you're coming across, you'll see these stitches, the play ones, are all words. So it'll stitch out handmade all in one go. It'll stitch out the word love. And then you've got the alphabet and numbers down here in four different fonts. And they're really easy to choose as well. It's got an amazing threading system, as you would imagine. But if I just go, I'll switch the machine off and on again. Because this is what's going to, or listen to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and this is what it, uh, raise the needle bar slowly. Okay. Yeah, I've done that. You do as you're told, don't you? Uh, resume last, uh, last pattern. Now, I wasn't the last person to use the machine. Jane came in yesterday. So this is a very clever feature from the machine. Um, when you switch your machine off normally, it'll default back to a straight stitch when you switch it back on. You can personalise the stitches on this sewing machine, uh, the length and the width. So if you switch the machine off, oh no, I can't remember what the setting was, the machine will ask you, do you want to go back to the last one? But we don't want to because we're starting afresh here. So it will default to utility stitches. What I'm going to do is change the colour of the screen because you might find that easier to use. So I'm going to go into settings. I've got a screen contrast, so I'm going to make that a little bit darker, just so that you can see it better at home. But as I go through here, touch screen collaboration. Oh, it's got a USB port as well. Um, when you use a USB stick for the first time, go for a low um, storage one, you know, not a very big one. Um, and uh, it will wipe off everything that's on your USB stick, but it needs formatting. So you press that button to format the USB stick. And then you can store things that you've remembered on your USB stick, um, but you can also create your own stitches. You're getting some software with it as well. Upper thread sensor is on. You can have it quiet if you don't want it beeping. So it's going to let me know basically when I'm running out of thread, but I can change the background color now. So that's pink. That doesn't look very much different at home to you, but the yellow does. Now, a lot of people uh, find it easier to, to even read on um, a particular colour. So that's what this is for as well. If, if reading black on a white background doesn't really make sense to you, then try it on the pink and try it on the yellow. And you may find that a little bit easier. Um, and I'm going to press OK to save that. But have a look through all of those different settings and see how you can change them. Um, you can really personalise all of the stitches. So immediately we go to a straight stitch in the centre. We're going to the next page. These are all the utility stitches. So that would be the first chapter that we looked at above. So those are over edge stitches, over edge stitches for heavy fabrics and for lightweight fabrics. When you click on them, so that's your heavyweight, you do have choices down here. Let's open that box up. So if I can, not going to let me do that one. That's as high as it'll go. You can change the stitch. I can change the tension because it's automatic at the moment, but if I want a special effect, I can change the tension. And I can choose whether the presser foot stays in the upright position or the down position. It automatically raises at the moment. So let's change that down. Oh, and then down here, FS means I can, uh, I can file the stitch. So I can save the settings on there. This is what I mean about personalizing it. So I can pop that into a file. 
or I can default. So default will take me back again. So you noticed here when I reduce the stitch length and let's increase the tension and let's just move this to normal. These change color, I don't know if you can see that. That's gone yellow. But if I want to default back to the original, just press DFT and this goes back to the recommended settings again. So you can go down there. Um, let's move across to this second chapter. Um, and in here, the, I, I love this as well, particularly if you're new to, if you're new to sewing, I don't think you're going to buy this machine, it's nearly £2,000, but maybe you're um, a dressmaker that's new to applique. So let's have a click on here. And these are all of the stitches that are recommended for applique stitching. Again, you can alter them. It says there's one of two, so I can go to the next page, and that's all of the second page of the applique stitches. Let's go back in here again. You've got heirloom stitches. So this could be for quilting. And you've got four pages of this one, lots of different stitches that you can use for creating smocking effects and the like. Um, with your quilting stitches, and you can see it recommends which foot to use here as well. Um, and you've got your tensions set there that you can alter if you wanted to. We've got eight pages of quilting stitches. Uh, let's go back again and on to satin stitches. Three pages of satin stitches. That's a lock stitch. This is because you can program the stitches as well. Um, so you can program a lock stitch. You can actually program the lock stitch to be followed by your thread cutter. Um, it's, it's so clever. Um, we've got the bridge stitches, so these are all of your straight stitches. And decorative stitches. Some of these overlap because some are decorative as well as being utility stitches like the overage stitch you see there. And we've got eight pages here. But you can play, oh those are the long stitches, we've gone on to the next chapter. But you can have a play with these. So for instance, there's the hearts. I can mirror image in two directions, not in this one, that's greyed out. So I can flip that over. But if I go into the settings here, I can make the whole thing shorter. I can make it flatter. You see how that's all kind of flattening and straightening out and going very small. So I'd suggest, it'll actually go into a straight line. It'll go all the way till there's nothing there if you want. I mean, you wouldn't, would you? But that's how in control you are. But that's a bit silly. So let's go back to default. Um, so you can play with most of the stitches on here as well. I did think it, it was funny when I played with the elephant. Because look, it's crouching down. And then they're all getting close and personal. And this one, you can mirror image that way, mirror image that way, mirror image that way. So you can really have fun with these. And remember, you can remember these. You can save those settings as well. This one is a fun one. I'm going to do this one again. I, I did it the other day, um, but I didn't quite finish the square. And I am going to admit I'm using the instructions to do that because I didn't realise that you could actually program in the length of the whole row of stitches that you want to make. But this tapers. So, for instance, with the, well, the stitch that we've got here, you can see it goes down at each end. When we open this up um, and press this one, It'll ask you even what angle you want that to be at. So if you do a 45 degree angle and use a satin stitch, I'm going to have a go at that in a bit, um, you'll be able to make a, a perfect square like that. Clever, isn't it? Where are we? This is your alphabets. So you've got four different fonts to choose from. And then this is quite handy as well. So you've got even more chapters. Um, I shan't go through all of them, but things like gathering. Uh, we've got two different types of gathering. A gathering stitch is normally longer. Well, it's always longer. So that's your long stitch, but that's a stay stitch. That's a, a stitch that you would put around um, the, uh, the top of your sleeve when you're fitting it to ease the stitches together. So that's a really nice idea. Um, we've got two pages here. We've got I'm going to do this one as well later on. Um, the variable stitch, uh, variable zigzag. This is using the knee lifter um, to taper the stitches. So you can taper them from top to bottom. You can taper them just on one side. Not done that before, so I'm going to have a go at that later as well. There is so much to talk about on the machine. 
honestly, that you can um, so join all of those letters together. There is a memory inside the machine, but if, the, if there's not enough storage in the machine, you can put your USB stick in the side and save your, all of your letters and everything there. And then just when you put your USB stick back in again, um, the machine will recognize it. But I think we should have a look at some of the stitches and just see how lovely this is to sew. Let's chop that. So at the moment I've got it set for the foot to automatically lift every time I finish. If you don't like that idea, then you don't have to do that. What, like, it just takes some getting used to. I, I automatically, because every machine I've ever had, I've put the, um, the take-up lever down. And you don't need to, but you still put the fabric on and then go, oh, look. So you will have to get used to that. Um, let's go for um, one of the decorative. One, let's go for the, one of the long decorative stitches. So let's go in here. Um, decorative, long. So that's quite a nice one, but I've got two pages. The bow's quite... Mm. So you'll be like this, oh, I don't know what to use. Let's go for number 16. I said, I'm just going to click that. And then put my foot on the foot pedal. You don't need to use the foot pedal. You've got the start stop button on the front. And the way we go. Oh, now then, so this is highlighted in blue so I know which stitch it is. I want to stop at the end of the complete stitch, so I'm going to press the lock button. I'm going to go off the edge, I think. I don't think I'll quite do it. Oh, it's just a bit. So my foot's still down to the floor. Because I've pressed the lock button, I've, I've already programmed it so that every time I press this button, it's followed by that one. So the foot's lifted and the thread's cut, and that's my row finished. If I didn't press the lock button, then the stitch would just carry on sewing and sewing and sewing. And then if I stopped it, it might stop halfway through. But if you wanted to stop at the end of the design, or if you just want to stitch one part of the design, so for instance, um, well, let's do the same stitch again, and I'm going to press the lock stitch and then start to sew. That should just stitch one design. So again, I haven't lifted my foot off the foot pedal. One design, followed by the scissors, foot automatically lifts, and then I've just got one piece there. And look how clear that design is, is as well. It's, it's a really lovely quality. There's so much to show you. Now I am going to refer to manual here, and we're going to do the tapered stitch and see if we can do a frame. So, we're going to go into the tapered stitch bit. So there's actually the picture of the tapered stitch on the top here. Um, and then you can see... Was that the tapered? I think I pressed the wrong one. Yeah, I did. There you go. So those are all of the tapered stitches. And I want a zigzag stitch, so I'm going to go for stitch number 26. Have we got a 26? That's that one. So you can see now I've got a, a satin stitch. Um, then press the end lock stitch key to turn on the end lock. That's the end lock. Press the tapering adjustment key, which is that one. And then I can choose the angle I want it to taper. So I'm going to choose 45 degree here. And then the pattern length key. This is the bit that I hadn't done before, which is the one, two, three. And let's go. Oh, this one. Two. So that's getting longer. So I'll put that up to five. I've still got a long tapered end on this end. So I need to change this to the 45 degree like that. And that's my shape. So you can see already how that's going to go together. Right, and then, oh, well, let's do it. So I've got my fabric under there. I'm going to press OK. So there's my stitch. If I click on the stitch, I've got a preview of what it's going to look like. Now let's see what happens. So it should stop sewing when it gets into the point. My breath is, as, breath is as baited as it could possibly be. 
How long is that going to be? Oh, it has. My foot is still down on the floor. So the needle's down. So I'm going to lift up the foot, turn this around, and start again. Oh! And again, I'm not taking my foot off the foot pedal. So that should... <laughs> Turn it around. Have you seen what it's doing there? Look at that frame! Oh! <laughs> it shows how clear the instructions are as well, actually. That was, I, I, as you were looking at the screen, I was literally following instructions. So I can stop the needle down. Oh, so this should, this should meet up. Right. My, my job was pressing buttons and then just making sure I turned that at a 90 degree angle. So fingers crossed I did. Oh, I think I might have missed it a little bit. Mind you, I'm looking at it from a funny angle, so that's my excuse. <gasps> oh, 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 slightly out, slightly out. Look, I slightly missed it. That wasn't quite a right angle. But look, you, you could never do that any other way, could you? Um, normally, if you're applying with a satin stitch, you'll have a box where it all overlaps in the corner, which is fine. But doesn't I'm going to put my thumb over there. Look, you'd never know, would you, if I showed you like that? Um, but what a neat! I'm so excited about that. <gasps> you could cut the centre out. Oh, you, let me show you. Um, scissors. You can make the stitches tighter together as well, which I might have done really if I'm doing this. But then you can just cut through here and you can do some reverse applique. <laughs> there we go. Right. There we go. So you can have a, a little bit of a practice with this as well without programming in the exact length that you need. And that was that's five centimetres. So when you click in five, it makes it five centimetres long. Um, but you can play with it. And if you don't put in the length that you want, then look, um, then you can, uh, it, it'll ask you. So if you stitch out one length of stitch, you think, yeah, that's, that's right, oh, I, can't, I didn't measure it. I don't know how long that is. Um, it'll come up on the screen. Do you want to remember that length of stitch? So then it will automatically, as long as you click OK, it will automatically stitch those out. Oh, I'm on a roll now. I'm going to do something else I haven't tried on this one before which is the tapered stitch for free motion embroidery, which I know is page 103. So, right, so I need my free motion foot and it's recommending the closed toe free motion foot. So I'm going to do as I'm told. Every day is a school day. You know, just so when you think you know everything about a sewing machine, they go and bring out all of these all of these new features. Um, so you will be doing exactly the same as me when you get this home and just playing. Hopefully you'll be, help, be able to find your screwdriver when you get yours home. So see how loose this is. Oh no, we need a screwdriver for that one. There will be a screwdriver in here. Oh, I forgot to tell you, there's another attachment with the, um, like the dish-shaped free motion embroidery little foot. Let me see if I've got one in my sewing box. See, so normally we put everything together. There's one in there, cat. <laughs> the little flat metal one. Thank you. Teamwork. It's like a relay. So let's take this off the side. It comes in a huge box as well. How exciting will that be when it arrives? Okay, there we go. It's very well packed. Right, so that goes on there. And then you've got an extra wide throat. Where are you? On this as well. So you've got 11 inches. 
So if you are quilting, you've got a nice big hole that you can roll your quilts up in there. Right. Come and ask any questions, by the way. I might not know the answer, but I have a manual, you know. Um, so, variable zigzag. So, select one or L. So, in here, you're going to go back into your chapters again. Um, where was the variable zigzag? Bear with me. Uh, Transparent nylon thread from the... No, that's not that one. Variable zigzag. So, we get, need to go into... We're going into there. I don't think we're going in there. Are we going in there? Variable ZZ. No. Let's go back to, whoops. Decorative stitches. Heirloom quilt. Flicking all the way through till I find it. Satin stitches, bridge decorated, utility stitches, heirloom stitches, quilt stitches. Satin stitches, bridge stitches, decorative, we've gone back to the beginning. Um, right, bear with me while I find out where that was. I was so well organised for this one. So, variable ZZ. I'm going to have a look on here. Which one? There's the long, there's the decorative. There's the bridge, there's the satin. Somewhere in here is variable stitching. Jane's watching at home, she's going to be cursing. What are you doing? <laughs> ah, I know, I know where we are, I know where we are. We're down here. Uh, we're back up again. Heirloom decorative bridge, why won't you change over? So, on, on here. I'm on page two. What have I done? Nope, don't want twin needle. Ah. I'd selected the twin needle for some reason, and of course you can't do these stitches with a twin needle stitch, so it wouldn't let me. So decorative bridge satin heirloom. No, that's not right, is it? I was going to have so much fun showing you this. So and that and that and that. Mm -hmm. If I carry this on for long enough. We'll just have to come back, won't we? So, let me go back again. So the one with the T-shirt on, click on the one with the T-shirt on, and then go onto page two, and there you've got VZZ, variable zigzag. So click on that one, and then click on variable ZZ. Right, I mean, I've been here before, haven't I, today? Um, and then it's saying to select M, so M has this, the variable in the middle, L has it just to one side, so the straight side of the stitch is kept on the left-hand side, and then it varies on this side. You'll understand what I mean in just a second. Uh, using the clear view filter, yes, I've got that one on. You can use any of those feet, it does, it does tell you. So select M, selected M, attached stabiliser, done that, done that. Okay, let's see what happens. So I'll drop the feed dogs, and I've got my fabric. I need the knee lifter for this one. So this is going to be fun. You might not have to look too closely at this because I'm standing up. <laughs> right, and let's, let's go. So I'm going to unplug the foot pedal because I can't use the foot pedal and the knee lifter at the same time. Let's see what happens. Oh. That's not doing that, is it? That's doing a straight line. Hang on, let me let me try this with the knee lifter. Oh, there we go. Ooh. You'll have to get used to doing that because the speed of my stitches wasn't perfect, look. Does it like a heartbeat, doesn't it? But let me, right, because that was the first time I've done it, so being honest with you. Let's have a go at making a leaf shape. So, one stitch to lock, that means you can cut away your thread, and then move this out and back. Do you know what? I'm going to lift the feed dogs up. Now let's do it. Lower the feed, oh, it's time me to lower it. Oh, there you go, digital. So, move the fabric slowly. 
nice and wide. It's automatically slowing down when they get to the wide bit. Tell them concentrating. Go over that if you've got any bits missing. Oh, I love this. Oh, I could have so much fun with this. If, you're, if you love your free motion embroidery, you wouldn't be able to do this without this uh, feature, would you? Oh, we'll stop it there, you get the idea. That was like a workout. <laughs> you weren't going to see that, but I'm going to end it with my knee like that. So when you're sitting down, use the knee lifter, but look what you can do. I mean, a first time practice, but that looks like reeds, doesn't it? So you can make a lovely seascape. But I, I was trying to do petals, but I need to practice a little bit more to do that. But that's, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my final one. That's, that's quite a good one. I think I would, I've gone over there again and just made it a little bit more dense. I, I love free motion embroidery. Oh, that gets your hips going. Um, your knee lifter, normally, you do use to lift up the foot pedal. Although this has got the automatic foot pedal lifter, so you don't need to use that. Right, let's get the regular foot back on again. Do you know how I lose things all the time? The only screwdriver I have has gone... Oh, there it is. So it's gone in the same direction as the magnetic snap did earlier on. Right in front of me, but can't see a thing. So let's take this off and put the standard foot back on again. I mentioned Jane in the video. Um, what's up with that? How does that happen? Um, Jane's been in the studio for the last couple of days doing some filming for us. Um, so for those of you who are buying the sewing machine, they're going to get sent a link um, to a video with Jane explaining more about it. There is software that comes with the machine. You're going to get a DVD, which will give you the basics of even where to plug it in and you know the out-of-the-box experience, so to speak, how to thread it up and how to choose the basic stitches. Um, and there's also some software in there to enable you to create your own stitches, which is something I did years ago. A brother brought out a sewing machine um, and you were given a piece of graph paper and you put in little dots, which is each one of the stitches, so you can design your own stitch. It took ages to do, but it was, it was a lovely effect. But when you use the software, um, I haven't designed any stitches yet because I just haven't had time. Um, when you put the software into your machine and you download it, it comes up with a graph on there. So all you do is click with your cursor and you can design your own stitches. I started making a, a rabbit, but I've just run out of time. But you can, you could create any, you can make rude words. You can create any kind of stitch that you like. Um, but that's all included. That's absolutely free of charge as well. That's one of the reasons, again, why you have your, um, why you have your USB stick. So, again, I'd have a watch out for that video. I'll let you know when that's finished. We're waiting for our editor at the moment. I wanted to show you the monogramming as well and how you join these letters together. Um, so, I thought I'd lost my stylus then, honestly. Um, on the screen, let's go back to... No, I don't want you. I'm going to switch it off and on again, get the main screen back up again. Do I want to save the last stitch? Love this noise when it starts. So resume last pattern? No, I don't want to resume last pattern. Um, I want to go into... Oh, I've got the, the foot up, foot down. Um, this lets me know whether the feed dogs are up or down. These are all of the different decorative stitches. Um, needle up, needle down position, I can choose that as well. These are all of the different chapters, so I'm just reminding myself of everything that's here. Let's go for the A to Z in block. Um, and then I can choose... You can't alter the size of the stitches a lot, but you can alter them um, slightly larger and slightly smaller. You can delete the whole selection as well if you wanted to. Um, but let's put in E 
and an L and an N and an A. These boxes at the bottom here are spaces. So we've got a full stop, we've got a small space and medium. Let's put a large space in there. Then I think I want to move on to one of the decorative stitches. So let's go in here and we'll have a couple of hearts for good measure and then a space and then a couple of solid hearts and then we'll go back to alphabet, back into the block and put in, oh, Debbie, E, B, B, I, E. Now because this is your preview uh, and most of the stitches have disappeared, but if you click somewhere on it, it'll bring it up in rows here. So if I've got a lot of stitches there, all the rows will be filled. So now I can check my spelling. And if I decide there's something I don't want on there, I can go back and delete it using the delete button. Um, what I did want to do, if I go back to the decorative, you'll see the lock stitch on the end. Remember my lock stitch has already been programmed to be followed by the thread cutter. So let's go back. Oh, there's my design, so I don't need to go back. Um, so let's just press start and see what happens. So my foot's programmed to be up, so that's starting in the uppermost position. Let's press start. Oh, it's telling me to raise the feed dogs. Forgot to do that. And away we go. So I haven't got the foot pedal plugged in, remember. The button's on red because I'm sewing. So because I've programmed in the lock stitch, that should automatically stop and then automatically cut the thread. So you don't have to have that programmed in if you don't want to. Um, take your time when you first get it home. Have a good old look at the instructions. Because I've been sitting out in the sunshine reading them, just flicking through the book. You just keep seeing more and more features, more and more things that you can do with the machine. But then I'd go into settings when you first get it home and personalise it. So change the volume, change the colour on the screen like I did previously. Then play. So it's just stop. It's stopped at the end of the row and it's cut the stitch. Isn't that clever? I did get, that was my fault, I just got that wrapped up in there. But it's a really lovely, clear design. And of course, you can do that with any of those designs. I can save this now if I wanted to. There's a little save file at the top of the screen. So let me do that. Um, so I can go here and I can choose whether I'm going to save this on the machine or into a, a USB. I've already got one programmed in there called Debbie that I was playing with earlier on. Um, but I changed my mind, I don't want to save it, I'll just delete it. So that's those all gone. So let's go back again into the main chapters. The pictorial ones are really nice as well. Um, the pictographs, sorry, which are these. And there's some really unusual ones. There's some stitches that I've seen before and some I certainly haven't liked the elephant. Let's choose him because he's so cute. And then we'll have one. No, not upside down. That way. Oh, he's still upside down. There. So they're, they're, they're bottom to bottom. Um, and again, you can still adjust the length and the width of, of things like that at the same time. If you go into mirror image something, you click on the mirror, mirror image button first and then add your stitch. I love the little washing line. I have seen that before on another machine. These I haven't seen. Actually, let's do those. Let's get rid of what's in there. Because you've got your 30 degree wash. You've got a 40 degree wash. We have 60. We have do not wash. So if you're making to sell or you're making as a gift, these would make a nice little label to go on the back of a quilt. In fact, you could use the handmade stitch. Um, I can't remember if that was in play, wasn't it? So you've got handmade. You could type with and then love. Um, you, could, you could write in there made by and make your own quilt labels and then put the washing instructions on there as well. I'm going to stick a shoe on there just because I like shoes. And then again, you've got that lock stitch. So after, I saying you've been through your instructions, get yourself some scrap fabric and just play. Stitch out the stitches because you tend to find that they look a little bit different in stitch form than they do on the pictures. So choose your favourite ones in that way. Um, and maybe try something that you haven't done before. You've got so many applique stitches. Try applique, is that something that you haven't tried? If you're a quarter or a dressmaker, applique is so much fun, it's personalising as well. Could be cushion covers, could be bags. Um, 
So it's a great opportunity. If you've got a machine that will, it's a good all-rounder, all as they say. If you are dressmaking, if you intend to, if you're a quilter, um, if you want to do homewares, maybe you want to make your own curtains, you're making over your house um, and you're redecorating, um, you know that you've got a machine that you can rely on no matter what kind of fabric that you put through it. And if you change your mind and say, I don't want to quilt anymore, I just want to make homewares, you don't have to change your machine. And that's finished. I mean, you wouldn't put all of those together, but you can do whatever you like with the machine. So remember, you've got 350 stitches on here that you can mirror image, you can change the look of, you can stretch, you can shrink. So the potential there is so much more than 350. But then with the software that's included, you have a limitless amount of stitches in any kind of design that you like. It's an amazing machine. Um, two year warranty from Elna, remember? Um, loads of feet that come, I haven't even counted the feet, loads of feet that come with it. Um, but it's a, a really good solid workhorse of a sewing machine. It's one of those machines that you probably never have to replace. Um, and it's fun. Shouldn't be a chore, should it, sewing? You don't, oh, I've got to do some sewing today. It's fun. And it's something that you can grow with. Let me just show you again the instructions that come with it, because they're really easy to follow. It's literally press this, press this, and then that happens. Um, so we've got instructions on when even using the gathering stitch it's got an ease stitch but do you think what's an ease stitch shows you what an ease stitch is and how to use the ease stitch um i mentioned earlier on there was the um the seam lifter um do they call it a seam lifter i call it a seam lifter um to make a shank on a button but it explains how to make that shank on a button so it's not just how the machine works these are all the different stitches remember you've got that um high performance stitch plate as well the straight stitch plate shall i show you how to attach that as well while we're here so if you take off the accessory compartment there's a lever here and it just pops out and the screen is telling me whoa look you've lost you've lost your plate and then the HP one, that simply clips back in place again. Oh, go on then. And it's telling me now that the straight stitching needle plate is set. Please make sure the proper presser foot is attached. Remember I showed you the proper presser foot earlier on. And oh, oh, oh really quickly, you do have a, um, a pivot pin. That'll be inside the accessory compartment, underneath the tray, and down in the corner down here. And there are, oh, that's really short. And there are two little holes in the machine here. And these are going to help you sew in a circle. I don't think I've got a piece of fabric big enough. Let me see. You might have to put stabiliser on the back of your fabric to make it work. I'll be able to do a curve with that anyway, if it works. So stick your pin in your fabric, you'll measure and mark that of course. And that goes in there. Um, so I'm trying to put the presser foot down and it doesn't need it. And then let's sew and see what happens. This is another one that I haven't used before. Oh. <laughs> see how quick that is. So obviously you'd need a bigger piece of fabric. But to make curves and to make perfect circles, you can only do those in the two sizes because it's only got the two holes. We do have a circle plate available as an extra if you wanted to make up to 10 inch circles. I'll show you that really quickly. I haven't got time to demonstrate it, which is this. This goes, um, you take off the, the bobbin plate, the bobbin cover, and this slips in the same place. Uh, same idea with the pin, but now you can make circles up to 10 inches and all the way down to about um, one inch in size so that's worth popping on your order for quilting with i think mainly so you can create like um wedding rings and, and things like that lots of circular designs there's actually a picture on the sewing street fans page of somebody who'd made a, a small quilt using the circle foot so that's have a look there that came out there right we're just about out of time um Lots of you have already ordered the machines. We only launched it last week, so I'm, I'm really hoping that you'll have this home as soon as possible. And when you do, can you let us know how you're getting on with it? How much fun it is. I, I just think it's one of those machines that you'll have it at home for six months, have a look at the manual, and go, I didn't know we did that. 
there's just so many features to the machine. There's far too much for even a couple of hours to demonstrate everything. Um, but it's fun to use, and it's one of those machines, as I said previously, that can really grow with you. Um, but it's, it's a whole explore, exploration with this machine, just discovering new things that, that it can do. It's an amazing machine, and it's quiet, and it's really smooth. Now I'm going to be back again tomorrow morning, nice and early at 8 o'clock, and we have dressmaking tools and fabrics at 8 o'clock. We have a Quilt As You Go Alexandra tote bag with Cara Aikman, and that's at 9 o'clock, so she's been filming from home again. And then, oh, there'll be lots of bargains at 10 o'clock with fabric stash building bundles. So I'll see you bright and early at 8 o'clock in the morning. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you've enjoyed the shows. Um, don't go anywhere, though, because we've still got a couple of more hours of um, I'm sewing repeats on the channel. So stay where you are. And if there's anything that you do want to catch up on, take a look on our YouTube channel. And you can take a look at all of the backlog of programmes right from day one when we started about six weeks ago in February. So come and join me in the morning. If you've got any questions, oh, you can order after the end of the show as well. So remember, anything that you order up until midnight tonight is only going to take one PMP. So if you have ordered already and you want to come back later on and order more, then we're not going to charge you any more than that £3.95 postage. Um, so come on back again with me tomorrow if you can. I'd love to have your company. Keep sending me the messages on Facebook. Oh, and put your pictures on the Sewing Street fans page as well because we do a, a draw for our favourites at the end of the week and you win a prize. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>